year, the Cincinnati Bengals are solid established contenders for the AFC Central Division title. Their coach, Sam Wash, has put in some innovative and controversial wrinkles to keep opposing defenses off balance. And to carry out his offense, Sam relies on third-year man Boomer Esiason. The left-hander's prime target is swift, sure-handed Chris Collinsworth. Meanwhile, the Bengals' ground game is built around a pair of king-size fullbacks and the versatile James Brooks, who also works extremely well from the backfield as a receiver. Tonight, the Bengals meet the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this has not been a year of smiles for Steeler coach Chuck Knoll. His team is 1-4, their worst start in a decade, and they desperately need a win. The defense has played well, but the special teams ranked last in the league in coverage, and the offense has been wracked by injuries, especially in the backfield. Recently acquired Ernest Jackson, a former Pro Bowl runner, has given the Steelers much-needed help. But with John Stallworth on injured reserve and quarterback Mark Malone questionable with a thumb injury, the Steelers will have to look to Louis Lips to keep a struggling passing game respectable. The Steelers are not out of the race yet, but they need a big game tonight in Cincinnati. You'll see it on Monday Night Football. <laughs> from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. Tonight, from the Central Division of the AFC, the Pittsburgh Steelers meet the Cincinnati Bengals. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Miller High Life. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. Miller made the American way since 1855. And by AMC Renault Jeep, where commitment to quality and innovation form a winning team. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, and welcome to a chilly and a rainy Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are delighted you're with us once again. We think we have a very interesting football game coming your way. The Pittsburgh Steelers are one in four in the Central Division of the AFC, and that's tough duty for head coach Chuck Knoll. It hasn't been that way since over a decade, and if they lose tonight to the Cincinnati Bengals, and they could well lose tonight, then they could pretty well much start thinking about next year. Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Bengals is a very young football team with 12 rookies, they have an explosive offense that's quarterbacked by Boomer Esiason now in his third year. There he is. He has three outstanding receivers. A rookie from Tennessee, Tim McGee, is coming along remarkably well. And, of course, there's Chris Collinsworth and the number one pick of Miami a year ago, Eddie Brown. So they have an explosive offensive team. Their problems really lie with their defense. They're ranked 23rd after five games into tonight. But they can put up a lot of points, and they can put it up there very quickly. Al Michaels, of course, is covering our championship baseball series for you, the American League. He'll be with you tomorrow night, light, along with Jim Palmer, as we continue that. And what a thriller we had yesterday. And consequently, I'll be working with a friend of mine for many, many years, Lynn Swan, a former great with these Pittsburgh Steelers and All-Pro. And let's go back about a decade following the 75 season, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 10 against the Dallas Cowboys. The MVP in that game, my colleague for tonight, Lynn Swan. What a spectacular game he had. Over 150 yards, I think, in receptions. And he just makes it look like pure artistry. Later on, of course, dance with the Pittsburgh Ballet, have done so, those kinds of things. Lynn, your old team, it would appear, is in deep trouble. They are injury racked, of course, but one and four they lose tonight. Well, they can pretty much write this one off. Certainly can. They haven't been one and four since 1976. And coincidentally, it was against the Cincinnati Bengals in game number six of that year that they turned things around and went on to win nine in a row to capture the Central Division crown. Well, that team in 76 didn't have the problems of the team in 1986. Injuries. They have been plagued by them all through their preseason training camp and through the season. When they get someone healthy, like Mike Reps, who came back after missing four games, someone else goes down. 
the left offensive guard, John Rainsford, number one draft choice, underwent arthro arthroscopic surgery this week to repair a broken bone in his foot. But the most critical injury that might affect this ball game is the one to Mark Malone. He severely bruised his thumb in the game against Cleveland last week. So that means that young Bubby Brister from northeastern Louisiana will get the start tonight. Now, Bubby hasn't played much. He played against the Dallas Cowboys, but Chuck Noll pulled him out because he was under attack by the Blitz. I talked to him before the game, asked him what he expected from the Cincinnati Bengals. He said, I expect them to come after me, and they're going to blitz. But when they do, I'm going up for the big play. A couple of big plays, I think they'll lay back. Now, the defense has played well enough to win three of the four games that they lost. But they're a little soft right now in the corner position, and going against the great receivers of Cincinnati, they will be severely tested. So it depends on the linebackers and the defensive line to put pressure on Boomer Esiason if they want to have a chance to get back in the Central Division race. Frank? All those things and more to come. And as we look down on the field, the Cincinnati Bengals will get things underway. This is Donnie Elder, deep for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Former third-round draft pick of the Jets from a year ago that the Steelers picked up on waivers. We are underway from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Elder from the goal line. Elder sprawls out of the 20-yard line. They'll mark it near the 23-yard line. And the man on the spot coming out is Bubby Brister. And if you wonder how he got that name, he had five sisters when he was growing up. So it figures that they would call him Bubby. Tell you quickly about him. He was scheduled to go to the University of Alabama and decided on a baseball career with the Detroit organization out of high school. Broke a wrist while he was playing baseball. Came back and spent a year at Tulane. Then he went to Northeast Louisiana. Actually only started one year as quarterback for Northeast Louisiana. That was last year. The Steelers drafted him number three. They are very high on him. And he's on the spot tonight. Brister unloads. He had a lot of time to get rid of the ball. That was just good defensive coverage back there by the secondary. Eddie Edwards finally got into his face and forced Brister to get rid of the football. And let's take a look at the defensive unit of the Bengals. It is suspect, no question about it. They are opening with two rookies in the secondary, David Fulcher and Louis Billups. And they, at times, will have a, as many as four rookies in this defensive lineup, and sometimes five. So it has not performed all that well thus far this season. They've made some big mistakes. On second down, big pile up at the 25-yard line as Ernest Jackson acquired by the Steelers three weeks ago, a former 1,000-yard rusher with the Eagles, a Pro Bowl rusher two years ago with the San Diego Chargers, and a man who's in there because Frank Pollard, the running back for the Steelers, is unavailable. Arthroscopic surgery. They've had all kinds of injuries, Lynn. Yes, they have, and what they really want to do to avoid pressure is get that ground game going so they don't have to rely on the passing attack. Dan Reeder, number 40, is in there now at setback. Passing situation, third down and long, but instead of passing, Steelers change up as I think Chuck Knoll is just trying to let Bubby Drister get the feel of the game as they sent Rich Ehrenberg on the sweep on a third down and eight. And I saw the game you spoke of. As a matter of fact, Al Michaels and I broadcast that game against Dallas when Chuck Knoll had to pull Brister out of that game in the third quarter because the Cowboy linebackers were raining all over him, and I don't think that he wanted the youngster's body destroyed. Newsom bangs it. And deep. And for the fair catch is Tim McGee, the great wide receiver, set all those receiving records down at Tennessee, and a number one draft pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. And here is Boomer Esiason. What a year he had last year. Second only to Kenny O'Brien of the Jets as the NFL rates their quarterbacks. Very cool cookie. Has performed well this year, except for a couple of weeks ago when he went up against the Chicago Bears and he threw up four interceptions. But he is a tough competitor. Team believes in him. And he can make things happen with some great receivers. As you look at a huge offensive line that will be blocking for him. Bill Johnson trying to break a tackle at the 25-yard line gets to the 26-yard line in the arms of Gary Dunn, the Noros tackle, and we'll see a little bit of the 3-4 of the Steelers tonight. We'll see a lot of 4-3 as they'll bring in Keith Gary and multiple combinations of defensive linemen. We'll see Daryl Sims and, of course, as good a linebacking as you can find. Well, maybe that's not true, but they are awfully good. Merriweather on one side, Hinkle on the other as we look at Sam White, the 41-year-old coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. Innovative and 
controversial in many ways, the way he handles his offense. We'll talk about that further. Second down and eight. Esiason throws underneath, and the ball goes out to James Brooks, and we'll probably see this all night. Good receiver out of the backfield, James Brooks, and a deadly runner. He is not big, Lynn. But he will move that football for you. He is Mr. Versatility and the kind of off offense that Sam White has put together. He is the key kind of performer he wants in that backfield. He can leave that backfield, split out as a wide receiver, so they don't need the substitute to get a third person in long yardage situations. Third down, short yardage. They bring in the moose, Larry Kennebrew, and I don't understate that in the program. Number 28 is 258 pounds, and as Brooks is on the sideline, Kennebrew is in. Kennebrew weighing about 270. Third down, a little more than a yard. And the moose was met short of the first. He gets to the 33-yard line. That's not enough. Brian Hinkle and David Little, linebackers that I spoke of a moment ago, they are powerful. They were in there to make the stop. And when you're that big, Lynn, you can't be all that swift off the mark. Well, you can't be that swift, but Brian Hinkle does a great job of hitting him high. He gets help. Some people hit him low. David Little, number 50 in there, and you have to gang tackle him to stop him. If you don't, he'll get one yard just by falling down. Give Robin Cole an assist. He was also there. Rick Woods is back playing with a broken thumb that caused him to cough it up a week ago against Cleveland. Jeff Hayes will do the punting, and he has not been doing that well for the Cincinnati Bengals. This time, he spanks one pretty good. Woods at his own 21-yard line. Slips on a carpet that's been dampened by rain as they remove the tarpaulin and he gets back to the 25-yard line. So, second possession for Bobby Brister from Northeast Louisiana, the rookie starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we'll see that second possession of the Steelers when we come back. Steelers lead the series between Cincinnati 17 to 10. And as you can see, we on our very first year of Monday Night Football back in 1970 had this group. They've had some close matchups. We've had some high scoring games. Of course, the Bengals blowing the Steelers away last year on Monday night. Bobby Brister, the rookie quarterback, brings up the Steelers at the 25 yard line, first down and 10. Abercrombie gets to the outside, gets a good block out front. Abercrombie is on open field. Abercrombie all the way. And there are no flags. Yes. On the sideline, is that a flag? Yep. 75 yards for Abercrombie. Got a great block from Randy Grassmussen, who's filling in for Renstra, and they are going to get a procedure call against the Steelers, nullifying the 75-yard run by Abercrombie. But what a block by Rasmussen, who is filling in for the injured number one draft pick, John Rinstra. The illegal shift on the offense. First down will be repeated. That's highly unusual. This is not a very sophisticated uh, sort of an offense, but they do a lot of moving around, Lynn. Well, one of, the, one of the big things here, Frank, is the Steelers really don't get to the outside and make those kinds of big plays. One of their problems is that they don't have a great deal of backfield speed, and the linemen have not been making the strong outside blocks to free those running backs. That's a play that you won't find happening very often for this team. So instead of leading six or seven or nothing, it is first down and 15 from the 20 yard line. Fister, fine shot. Ball comes loose. Scramble for it. Emmanuel King is covered. It was Arenberg, the receiver, usually sure handed and very possessive of the football, who coughed it up. Emmanuel King, the opportunistic outside linebacker, was there to cover for Cincinnati. And they get the ball in great field position. Number 53, Leo Barker, is a man that causes the fumble. You'll see. Oh, 53, excuse me, is a linebacker. He just piled in on there. The ball pops loose. Number 90, Emmanuel King from Alabama makes the recovery. At the 32-yard line, Cincinnati. Messiah with a lot of time. Fires over the middle. It's complete. And it's Holman, the tight end. Holman took it away from a defender. And what a quick turnaround. Instead of a 75-yard touchdown run by Abercrombie and a lead for the Steelers, that was negated by an illegal shift. And in the very first play following the fumble recovery, Cincinnati strikes Esiason. Hitting Holman from 32 yards out right over the middle. 
Holman had a big game against the Steelers last year, catching five passes for 56 yards and one touchdown. He is not the biggest or the swiftest tight end, but he's smart. Never makes a mistake, Frank. I'll tell you, he is a good receiver. He has good speed. And as you can see, the Steelers were trying to cover him with Brian Hinkle, the linebacker. No chance in America. Reach on for the conversion. seven to nothing lead. Holman's a good receiver. Works well off the line of scrimmage and he got himself a matchup with a linebacker and he beat him. Well the big thing here was Boomer Esiason had the time. He turned around the linebacker Brian Hinkle didn't have a chance out of position. They take the early lead on a great play. We'll be right back. Aaron Berg's fumble. Cincinnati's recovery. One play, Boomer Esiason to Rodney Holman. His first touchdown of the season. The Bengals on top, 7 to nothing. Really going in the first quarter. Deep is Donnie Elder for the Steelers on the kickoff, and Jim Breach to hit it. Elder from the four-yard line. Elder with a good move to the outside, works it up close to the 29-yard line, and out comes the Steelers' offense once again. Bobby Brister getting the call tonight as Lynn mentioned at the very top of our telecast. Mark Malone banged up his thumb last week against the Cleveland Browns is very sore. He could probably play and we might even see him tonight but as was explained to us by head coach, coach Chuck Noll, Bobby Brister had all the work with the first offensive unit this past week. Consequently we are seeing the rookie from Northeast Louisiana. On first and ten. Abercrombie. Gets to the line of scrimmage and squeezes out a yard. David Fulcher up there from his safety spot. One of the men that has come back for the Steelers is their perennial all-pro Mike Webster, number 52, and you see his action here. Important. Mike doesn't make the good block here, but it's important for him to have a good game, control the center of the line, if the Steelers are going to have any success. He didn't do it that time. Second down and nine. The Steelers at their own 30-yard line. Bristol trying to get a screen off. And Ehrenberg doesn't handle it. And it was set up in front of him. Or rather, Walter Abercrombie. And he had the screen in front of him. Rasmussen was there. Also, Terry Long. It'll be third down now and nine for Bristol. He looks over to the Steelers bench. Frank, it's so important you get a young man like Bubby Brister in the ball game. Everybody else on the offense, offense has to come together and give him the help and support he needs. He doesn't need to have a receiver catch the ball, fumble it. He can't afford to have a back be open on a good screen and not make the catch. That is sudden, that is sure death for this young man in this ball club. And you almost know the Bengals are going to come with everybody. And we got a young quarterback in there. You throw the blitz at him. They have a version of the Bears 46 defense. And they do bring the linebacker. Reggie Williams and Brister steps up and fires, completes a screening. Good effort by Brister. The Bengals came with their blitz predictably against a rookie quarterback. Brister stepped back into a pocket and it was only there for a moment and he found Calvin Sweeney and Sweeney takes it all the way down inside the 15 yard line. That's a real heads up move for a young quarterback, Frank. How many times have we seen a young man get back in the pocket, feel the pressure and he takes off and run? He can run right there, but no. He sees, he waits downfield, finds Calvin Sweeney. Calvin Sweeney's in open position, coming back to the football, makes a catch. Certainly the Steelers are now back in this ball game and can strike quickly. Terror will bring out the best in all of us. <laughs> no, it was a fine effort. The longest pass play of the season for the Steelers, a 58-yard effort. Abercrombie. This ball is down close to the 8-yard line. Abercrombie and Jackson... Recently acquired, as I mentioned earlier, on waivers from Philadelphia. They will be doing the bulk of the running for the Steelers tonight, and Chuck Noll likes to run the football. Lynn, it's kind of old-fashioned football when you're talking Chuck Noll. Chuck is very conservative about his offense, the running style. He likes the lineman to trap and pull, make a good block, and keep it solidly on the ground. From the seven-yard line, second down and six. 
Have a crown. The left side. Nothing happening there. Emmanuel King coming all the way from the left side. The rookie safety was up there. Fulcher and as might be predicted over that right side Reggie Williams who is about as solid a linebacker as you're going to find in this game a real leader for the Cincinnati Bengals group number 57 out of Dartmouth Reggie Williams the Steelers came into, the, into this ball game, Frank thinking they could run off tackle so I look for them to do that in key situations yes sir depending upon what Chuck Noll wants to let him do should have to put it up in the air Missing Louis Lips. Just had a little too much on that, and we'll see the field goal unit come out. But the youngster out of Northeast Louisiana proves he had the cool to get it done. Comes to the sidelines. Under enormous pressure, he was able to get the ball downfield to Calvin Sweeney. Perhaps a little too much on this one for Louis Lips, who are usually shorthanded. That might have been touched a little bit. How well, Louis Lips still could have handled that one. Gary Anderson, if he hits, he'll become the top field goal kicker in the history of the league, and he misses from 26 yards out. All he needed was that field goal to replace Nick Lowry as the top percentage field goal kicker in the history of the game. Let's look at it again. Newsom, the punter, is the holder. Has it on its way. But he misses. Just outside, and it clips the crossbar. We'll be back in Cincinnati in a moment. Eight oh six remaining in the first quarter. As we look at Gary Anderson, the Steelers cut his holder Scott Campbell a week ago, and he had a new holder in Harry Newsom, the punter tonight. And I don't care what you say, uh, kickers <laughs> kickers are a little different. They don't like like to lose their dolly or their blanket, or they get in a lot of trouble. In any event, Anderson, one of the great kickers in this game, has missed from 26 yards out. Bengals first down and 10, the ball at their own 20-yard line. Esiason is back. A lot of time. And he gets it out to Rodney Holman. At the line of scrimmage, maybe he gets a yard out of it. Boomer's got the big gun, can go downfield deep. But Sam White wants him to learn his patience, take his time, read the defense, take what they give him. He'll attack these cornerbacks, and if it's not there deep, then he'll drop it off to his tight end. His back's out in the flat. Second round draft pick back in 84, became the starter, replacing the legendary Kenny Anderson a year ago. And obviously the quarterback of the future for the Bengals. He looks over a second down and nine. Brooks. And Brooks is hammered. Hit hard. Gary Dunn. And Gary Dunn is healthy at the nose tackle position. He's about as good as they come problem has been over the years a lot of knee problems he had two knee operations during the offseason but he's come back not feeling the ill effects he stands up the center right there playing to his outside Brooks gets the ball and he is an easy little bird in the big nest it's like standing up a condominium Dave Remington is a center at 290 gain of a yard call a third down and eight pocket chase out by David Little has to throw the ball releases downfield incomplete David Little was coming on the blitz of course the size and out of the pocket and we'll see the punting unit David Little younger brother of Larry Little who coaches down where Bethune Cookman yes indeed so we got a couple of Bethune Cookman players uh, playing for San Diego last week David alternates a lot with Dennis Winston at that inside linebacker position. Tough linebacking core for the Steelers. Jeff Hayes to punt and deep is Rick Woods. And stepping back up, trying to get it off his foot as Hayes, the ball is loose. He almost picked up a first down by accident. He's had two blocked already this year, has Jeff Hayes. They have had a lot of problems with Hayes. He almost got it off. But the Steelers will get the turnover. They'll get the break. The Steelers' special teams have been much maligned. Now they've given up points. They gave up a big touchdown to Gerald McNeil last week, running back a kickoff for the Cleveland. Merriweather. Mike Merriweather, number 57, just comes charging through, puts the pressure on him. And then Anthony Hinton, 
makes the big play, comes up with the fumble, comes up with the recovery. But Frank, that ball rolled is only two yards short, short of a first down for Cle uh, Cincinnati. You know, it did appear as if Hayes had time to get rid of that football. It was a high snap. The center is Ed Brady. Let's take a look again. Hayes pulled off his target right there. He knew he was in trouble with 57 Merriweather. And indeed he was. In any event, the Steelers have the football near the 23-yard line. Brister is back. Looks deep for Lips downfield and then has to settle for the tight end. Justin Gothard. He wanted to go to Andrew Lips. Parker. Lips, of course, playing without John Stallworth on the other side, and that takes a lot out of an offense. Stallworth out with a knee injury. Frank Pollard, we mentioned the running back out with a knee injury. Mark Malone, sore thumb. Walter Abercrombie playing tonight with a sore thigh muscle and Grinstrom, ankle surgery this past week. The number one draft pick at left guard is gone for the season. Second down and three now for the Steelers. Jackson. Good running by Jackson. Breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Gets the first down. Taken out of bounds by Kemp. But not until he gets down close to the six-yard line. The best play of an offensive lineman for the Steelers this year has been by number 62, Tunch Ilkin. He's pulling right here. He gets out. He makes a key block right there on number 53, Leo Barker. It springs Ernest Jackson to the outside to pick up the first down. Jackson picking up where he left off over the past couple of weeks. He's had 143 yards, averaging just under five yards in the last two games. First down, goal to go. And they have marked it at the seven. Ehrenberg and the overachiever inside the five to the three-yard line. I say that admiringly because he came up as a high-round draft pick a couple of years ago and has just done everything for the Steelers. A good receiver. He's returned punts and kickoffs. He has been healthy. He's been able to stay in there. He's not all that big. Young man who broke the records of Mark Van Egan and Marv Hubbard at Colgate. Second down, goal to go. The ball near the four-yard line. Ernest Jackson. Extra effort. And they're not going to give it to him. I thought that was a touchdown clearly, Frank. He, he took on number 57, Reggie Williams, right at the goal line. Line does an excellent job once again. There you see him. His head got over the line, but Frank, the ball did not cross the plane. Good call by the officials. The former line officials, and boy, the video replay has really been nailing them, but, you know, it is amazing how accurate they are. They do an amazing job, week in and week out, and boy, do they take the abuse. Third down goal to go. Brister gets it in on his own. At least we have one indication from the head linesman. So the Steelers converts the block punt of Jeff Hayes into a touchdown. Let's take a look at it again. Ron Simpkins will come over the top and try to keep Brister out of the end zone. He's unable to do so. But a big emotional play for Bubby because he was throwing very well in the drive. Now they finally come up with the points because of the block punt. Gary Anderson for the conversion to tie it up. Newsom gets it down and we're tied at seven here in the first quarter with 421 remaining. 128 straight extra points for Gary Anderson. We'll be back. Quite a city, and of course, Riverfront Stadium really almost downtown, located on the Ohio River. It's light up Cincinnati night, and they are doing it in a very proud way. It's been called one of the most livable cities in the nation by Saturday Review. I once worked on the United Way film here. Wonderful people, and they are proud, and rightfully so, of their city. Anderson hits it, and Tim McGee takes it at the goal line. And McGee is hit as a flag goes down. McGee goes down at the 19-yard line. Number 80, Warren Seeks, back up tight end, the man who made the stop. Referee is Bob Frederick tonight. In charge of video replays and fun and games, Nick Scarch. Hopefully we will not be hearing much from them tonight, along with Al Ward, the communicator. 
offensive holding on the kick return team, number 56. I want to remind you, tomorrow on ABC Sports, the National League Championship Series reaches game five as the Houston Astros and the New York Mets fight it out. That one, of course, rained out today. Our coverage begins at 1 o'clock Eastern with Keith Jackson, Tim McCarver. Also tomorrow evening is game six of the American League Championship Series with the California Angels and the Boston Red Sox. Our American League Championship Series continuing there. Al Michaels along with Jim Palmer. And we pick it all up tomorrow. And what a thriller that was yesterday in the American League. Here we go. Brooks to the outside. Finds an opening. He does this so well. Oh, he weighs 182 pounds. He stands 5'10", but he plays so much bigger. Chris Sheffield finally takes Brooks out of bounds, but not until he had moved it out over the 40-yard line, close to the 42. A look again. Good blocking on this. You talk about the size of that offensive line. Look at the big people out in front. Right there, number 33, Harvey Clayton, the corner, who should take on that lineman, slips and falls, so he has an escort, uses his speed to break down the sideline. Bill Johnson out in front, didn't get a block, but he just kept going and got the defensive back to commit. James Brooks cuts behind it and gets the first down. Little draw, fake by Esiason, and down he goes, and the loss is back at the 35-yard line. Keith Willis, who has led the Steelers in sacks over the past couple of years, was all over Esiason. Beating the block of Brian Blados over in the right side, and Willis now is limping off. That's three sacks on the year for Keith Willis. I think we're going to see a pretty good matchup, Frank, between Willis and Blados. Blados is a big tackle, but the scouts say he doesn't move that well. So a good, fast defensive lineman, a linebacker, is going to try and shake him, move to his outside to make the play. They average about 285 along that offensive line. There's nothing small out there. It's like they parked a bunch of trucks. It'll be second down and 15. This time has the time and he has the receiver wide open and cruising downfield and he will really threaten the defensive back is speedster Eddie Brown in the second year out of Miami who came up and had a sensational rookie year. You just can't cover him closer. He's going to blow by you, Lynn. Number 41, Chris Sheffield plays too far to the inside, but he makes a mistake in stepping out of bounds there. He backed up after he caught the ball. He really needed to be under better control to turn upfield and get the first down. I'll tell you, have they been on a little better wavelength and known each other a little longer, Eddie Brown could have turned that into a fly and a quick six points because Sheffield was all tied up and locked inside. Third down and one now, Cincinnati, right at midfield. Brooks. I don't think he'll pick up the first down. David Little, the bottom of that pile. David Little, Robin Cole, several of the Steelers. They are playing the Cincinnati Bengals as well as I've seen any team on short yardage. That's the second time they've stopped the Bengals in a crucial third and short situation. A big emotional game for the Steelers. You have to wonder about giving the ball to Larry Brooks on a third down and short yardage when you got a 270-pound fullback, Larry Kennebrew. Albeit he has been suffering from a very sore ankle and that could be the reason. Fourth down. Cincinnati Sam White says we'll go for it. Or at least they'll take a long count try and get a penalty I would assume. It's a big man. I don't think he got it either. Hit by Merriweather. The smallest of those Steeler linebackers first. Steelers are saying that they pulled the ball out of there. Gary Dunn was at the bottom of the pile also. Whether it's a fumble or not, if they didn't pick up the first down, you the ball it. belongs to the Steelers. This team, Frank, is playing like the Steelers did back in 1976 when they started that turnaround to go 9-0. They came up against the uh, Cincinnati Bengal team. The Steelers defense went nine games with five shutouts playing this kind of football. Gang tackling, really pushing. Look at Gary Dunn. And the ball does pop out right there. They were right. It was a fumble. I'll tell you, at 270 pounds, Kennebrew was very slow getting to that hole. There was a hole there that had he been there a little earlier, he would have got that first down. This is what I think Sam White is concerned about. He balloons up past what they tell him he should weigh, and they don't even know what he is. He said somewhere around 270, 275 today, when he should be weighing about 255. 
Frank, they're having the conference on the field. If they are looking at that play, thinking it was a fumble, the only difference would be maybe a yard or so movement of the ball. Put 14 seconds back on the clock. Put 14 seconds back on the time clock. Immediately. Immediately. We will have 14 seconds back, if you please. Very authoritative referee tonight, Bob Frederick. Sam White used to play a little quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals back when they were in their formative years. Later was the coach here under Bill Walsh and later went out and coached with the 49ers for Bill Walsh and was part of their Super Bowl effort when they beat Cincinnati following the 81 season. And, of course, came to the Bengals three years ago as head coach. He's done a fine job. First down and 10, the Steelers. We have a tied football game at 7, 127 remaining in the first quarter. Brister trying to get somebody's attention as Louis Lips works on Louis Breeden. And Breeden in good position, the veteran cornerback running stride for stride with Lips. After the Cleveland game, Frank, I talked to Minifield, the corner for the Cleveland Browns. He said the Steelers haven't been going deep, and we didn't expect them to go deep in that ball game because Lewis Lips had a bad hamstring. John Stallworth was out. In this ball game, it's very important that the Steeler receivers at least test the corners deep to get them to spread out. That ball could have been thrown inside, and Lips, with the speed, might have been able to breeze by Breeden, but Brister had it on the outside, and it was uncatchable. Second down and 10. Abercrombie hit at the line of scrimmage. Leo Barker, the linebacker there. Gain of perhaps two. And it will leave Brister in that unenviable position of attracting a lot of attention. Probably from the Cincinnati Blitz. He has a third down and long situation. Pittsburgh, as we mentioned earlier, has improved over the past couple of games. They got off to a horrendous start. Third and long for Brister. Blitz is on. Good protection, though, for Brister. His receiver, however, Calvin Sweeney, had fallen to the carpet, and Brister threw it away. He had excellent protection that time, Frank, and we should probably tell people that there was a light rain just before the ball game. The field was covered, so it's in pretty good shape, but there may be a few wet spots out there. You see Calvin Swinney comes in, and right there he just slips on the carpet. I think that's only because of the rain. And going down with him, Billups, the rookie from North Alabama. Newsom on to punt. Deep is Tim McGee. You had a quick look at McGee. Booming, towering punt by Newsom that will... Stop inside the one-yard line. That took an incredible Steeler bounce. Seitz was down there covering a 47-yard punt, and it is down inside the one-yard line. But it took an almost unbelievable bounce. McGee had the right idea. He faked a fair catch, came up. He drew the coverage to him. There was no one around the ball. You see everyone up around McGee, but Newsom made such a great punt. It just died there, and then Seitz comes along just to take it out at what might be the one-inch line. You saw Newsom. Interesting what turns on kickers, isn't it? He'll remember that <laughs> for years. He puts the Bengals inside their own one-yard line. Ball goes out to Johnson. And that tells you the confidence that Sam White has in his quarterback, Boomer Esiason. First down inside the one-yard line, dropping back, throw the football. And there is a, a great deal of admiration on the part of these two. I mean, Sam White will say just about anything he thinks about his personality. He's very outspoken. Sometimes he's confused by members of the press, and the players read about it. They get all upset about it. But he is very close and very high on Boomer Esiason. The first down is out near the 16-yard line. Brooks is in motion. Works into the pattern, and Esaias and under throws, but Donnie Shell was there, and Harvey Clayton, the cornerback, came up to make the pop. Mike Merriweather, number 57, was having a close conference with Boomer Esaias in the backfield to make sure he hurried that pass. We're going to have some fun. I'll tell you, I just like to watch John Elway play. They're undefeated, but that's incidental of the fact that this guy does it in ways no one ever has done at quarterback. He's amazing. 
Strong arm, he throws a side arm, he throws it anyway between his legs, it's just amazing. But the Jets, nevertheless, with Ken O'Brien on the sidelines behind Pat Ryan, hung in there yesterday, knocked off New England. They are five and one. We're looking forward to that game a week from tonight. Second down and 10. That's the blitz. And he picks it up, and when you pick it up, you usually get big results, and that's Chris Collinsworth out over the 35, and Donnie Shell wrapped him around the neck, clotheslined him, dropped him at the 36. The crowd would like a flag on it as Collinsworth is slow getting up. Chris, He's not one of your big strong types to begin with. Well, Chris should be a little slow getting up. That was a tough hit. It looks like the arm goes around his neck, Frank, but actually hits him square in the chest, and after the hit, Chris Collinsworth reached out a hand, extended it to Donnie Shell, acknowledging it, that it was just a good hit. Actually let up on it a little bit as the quarter ends. Chris Collinsworth, the leading receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, has given them a first down out to the 35-yard line. Remember, they started inside the one. We'll be back in a moment. More than 50 years, Art Rooney has guided his beloved Pittsburgh Steelers. He helped build the foundations of professional football and set a standard of quality that has made the NFL unparalleled in professional sports. His calm, selfless counsel saw his team through the tough early years to the Steelers' first Super Bowl victory in 1975. The Steelers are the only NFL team to win four Super Bowl titles. Art Rooney and his family have been part of the vitality and tradition of the Pittsburgh community. His strong commitment to the United Way and the Catholic charities, which they support, has made him one of the most universally loved and respected citizens of Pittsburgh. And he's still helping others. Pittsburgh is said to be one big family. Art Rooney is the heart of that family. This message furnished by the National Football League. Arthur Rooney, if there is such a thing as a lovable man in this game, he certainly is that, a great man. Our ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. Buick, where better really matters. Frank Gifford, along with Lynn Swan, Al Michaels, will be joining you tomorrow night with continuation of the American League Championship Series from Boston with Jim Palmer. We hope you're enjoying our game as we begin the second quarter. We are tied of seven. The Bengals have the football, first and ten, at their own 35-yard line. Pittsburgh Steelers desperately need a win tonight. They are one and four and in danger of being out of it very early in the season. Down the sidelines, Bill Johnson. Esiason hitting Johnson out of the backfield. And Johnson in the Pittsburgh territory near the 47-yard line. And let's take a look at the first quarter numbers. They are very even, Frank, surprisingly even. We thought that Cincinnati was going to really take it. At least I did take it to the Steelers. The Steelers seem to be legitimate underdogs in this ball game, coming back from a series of injuries. But the offense has accepted the challenge, and they're playing quite well. And the defense, again, playing an admirable football game. Earlier, Walter Abercrombie in the early going was called at a 75-yard touchdown run called back on an illegal procedure call. We're looking at the face of Boomer Esiason, the quarterback for now and the future for Cincinnati. Has a left-handed shot and intended for Eddie Brown, and he hung it up there too long. That's a tough pass to throw for a left-hander rolling right. Eddie Brown was wide open. Yeah, uh, he still should have had it, Frank. This ball comes right to him. He turns up field. It's going to be an over-the-shoulder catch. The ball's a little bit inside, but he just, I think he loses his concentration. The ball goes right through his hands. I tell you, he was looking at number Eric 21, Williams. Eric Williams, and you, <laughs> and you can't blame him. Eric was Williams was coming down like a locomotive on him. Looking at a new dentist bill is what he was looking at. He'll be around in this league for a while. You do take a peek now and then. Second down and 10. Esiason, 7 of 10, 106 yards, and he has the one touchdown pass to Holman, the tight end. Esiason in trouble, but gets out of it. And fires incomplete. Intended for Holman. Mary yeah, he's having words with Mike Merriweather and the pressure put on by Keith Gary. Excellent pass rusher who finally is playing the way the Steelers would like to have him play after coming back a couple of years ago from all-star days up in the Canadian Football League. He leads the team in sacks with three and a half. 
They put him in on passing situations to get his speed and size in there on the QB. It's the Siasons no huddle offense or Sam watches call it the attack offense if you will he's calling the play right there and the lineman will pass it along their code words they have they usually use it on third down and it is third and ten Siason hit by Gary and almost picked off by Robin Cole uh, the Siason really nailed as he released the ball by Keith Gary defense doing an excellent job Frank keeping that pressure on him they're trying to get a punt off with the Siason doing the punting while Pittsburgh scrambles around. I don't know what they're doing. It's like a fire drill to me out there. Fourth down and ten. The ball at the 48-yard line of the Steelers. They wanted to do this before the punt return unit of the Steelers got onto the field. Nobody would cooperate, including the Steelers. They were all over the field, so you have to wonder about this. It really burdens, I think, your offensive team to put so much pressure on them. They have to think about everything. When you don't huddle, it's a little bit different. And that was one of Sam White's new wrinkles. We'll be back in a moment. Sam White, he's young, he's bright, he's innovative. He is into this game. And right now, the Cincinnati Bengals are getting a little chat on the sidelines from this young former Bengals quarterback. Meanwhile, the Pittsburgh Steelers have a first and ten, the ball at their own 16-yard line. Ernest Jackson breaks it out to the left side and works it up close to the 18-yard line. Again, give him three on that. Goes down in the arms of Leo Barker. It'll be second down and seven, and there is the big center. Great collegian football player, Remington. He won every college award you can imagine for an offensive lineman. Second and seven. Should see the blitz on second and long. We get it. Jackson breaking a couple of tackles and moving out over the 20-yard line where it'll be third down and about six. One of the big problems the Steelers have had in terms of the injuries, Frank, are on the offensive line. Craig Wolfley, who is normally the starting offensive guard, injured early. He can't be activated until after this ball game. They've got a young man in there, number 74, Terry Long. Short, smallest lineman in the NFL, and sometimes he just doesn't have the power, Frank, to kick out that defensive end that's closing to contain. Brister, the rookie quarterback from Northeast Louisiana on third down and six. Hook sliding out of the 30-yard line. Heads up play by Brister, and he gets the first down for the Steelers. You know, when you talk to Chuck Noll, and I know you the, you know this, Lynn, he loves to teach. That is, I think he'd rather teach than win sometimes, and he likes to take something and mold it into something special. And when we talked to him about Bubby Brister last summer in the preseason game against Dallas, his eyes were kind of glowing when you talked about this young man. He talked about one specific game in which Northeast Louisiana went to play Texas A&M. They didn't win that game, but Bubby Brister impressed Chuck Knoll, and he took him in the third round. And he opened tonight because of the thumb injury to Mark Malone. He's done very well. On first down. Sweeney was there, and Brister underthrew the ball. Lewis Billups, the rookie from... North Alabama was back there along with Bobby Kemp. They want they want to go after Billups. He was open. The ball is thrown. He just didn't have enough on it. But Calvin has got to come back and help the quarterback here. He's got to judge that ball in the air. He's got inside position. So if he slows up Frank, he keeps the corner back to his outside. Then he's got the position to go up and make the tough catch. Would have helped if he'd have thrown a little earlier. One of those things. Ta timing's <laughs> up. But that's what I mean about the team helping Timing the young is everything, isn't it, in life? Yeah. Got to help the young quarterback make the plays for him sometimes. Brister is showing a lot of poise. He'll see the blitz now, second and long yardage. At least that has been Cincinnati's pattern. Well, they're done with the regular pass rush. Abercrombie gets to the outside, and up into the ball is loose and covered by Ouija Thompson. Breeden made the hit on Abercrombie. The ball came loose, and Ouija... Thompson was up there to cover 
but now they'll mark it back where Abercrombie went down. He's saying it is not a fumble. And that will bring up third down and long yardage. The Steelers now at their own 34-yard line. Lewis Lips. He is so talented, Frank. I think if he stays healthy, he'll break every Steeler record in the book. Still hurting a little bit from the hamstring pull is Louis Lips. Christer looking over the third and six. A lot of perfect protection. And overthrows the intended receiver, Lips. That's one he could have had in there. Hunting unit will come out. Lips, at this time a year ago, had six touchdowns. Coming into tonight, he has one touchdown. In the two games against Cincinnati last year, he had 186 yards on eight receptions, two touchdowns, and a 62-yard punt return. Newsom hits it for the Steelers. This is Tim McGee, the rookie from Tennessee. He works it back to the 38-yard line. Warren Sites hustling down there defensively for the Steelers. It's cleared up in Cincinnati. The rain has stopped, and we'll be back in a moment. Frankly, I'm allergic to cats, particularly big cats. And this is a big cat. It's a big bingle, of course, especially around mealtime. They always leave their mark. They gnaw your fingers off, too. <laughs> they leave a mark if they don't eat it all up first. 11-17 remaining here in the first half. We are tied at 7. The 3-2 and two Cincinnati Bengals and the 1-4 and four Pittsburgh Steelers. First down and 10. The Bengals have the ball at their own 38-yard line. Siason hands off to Bill Johnson, and Johnson works the left side out close to the 45-yard line. I think there's a flag down in the middle of that pileup. Ouch, a big one against Cincinnati. Make it first and very, very long. They have three wide receivers in the game. Offensive holding, number 50. First down will be repeated. You think Dave Remington is big enough not to have to hold? 6'3, 288 pounder. The Steeler defense has been effective throughout the entire season. It's the offense that's troubled the Steelers. Let's take a look at 50 right in the middle, working against number 98. That's Gerald Williams, the rookie from Auburn. Ripping up the wardrobe a little bit. Down remains the same, so we have a first and 20. The ball at Cincinnati's 28-yard line. Brooks. Another flag goes down as Brooks puts on a show out to the 38-yard line. Chris Sheffield made the stop. Preliminary indication. Well, here's Bob Frederick. Well, maybe here's Bob Frederick. <laughs> Face mask. The 98 on the defense. Darrell Williams, who was held a moment ago by Remington. Let's watch him again, number 98. Brooks will do this to you. He's like, he just skitters around all over the line of scrimmage. Hard to get a handle on this young man. There it is right there. There's no question. You got to call that. That is really dangerous. Actually, that was against Robert Cole, who got the hand in there. But the officials picked up. Gerald Williams, number 98. In any event, the first down is inside Pittsburgh territory near the 47-yard line. Good football game. We hope you're enjoying. Almost a must game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're one and four in the central division of the AFC. While Cincinnati is three and two. Cleveland is four and two on top of the division for the moment. Brooks again. Another flag. Another flag, and Brooks again with a nifty run down to the 41-yard line. A relatively smooth, clean game up until the last few moments. Here's Bob Frederick again. Holding number 78 on the offense. Anthony Munoz, who was questionable tonight because of a strep throat. The big all-pro left tackle was holding, and Cincinnati will be backed up once again. I asked him about that strep throat. He says when you get it, everything just kind of swells up, aches in your body. Obviously, your throat swells up. And Sam White has said every year he's been here, one ball game or another, Anthony Munoz has had this problem and has been limited in his action. 
It's kind of silly, doesn't it? 6'6", 278 pounds. I can't go tonight. I have a strep throat. First down and 20. Off the fingertips of Brooks. It would have been about a three-yard pickup on that. Let's take a look at Munoz over on the left side. He's big number 78, 6'6", 278 pounder. And take a look at the action in the middle. There's right, Munoz. Right there on the end, he's blocking well, trying to push him on the outside. Daryl Sims. And <laughs> look at Daryl Sims. Throws a little karate move in there, not happy. The accusing finger of Munoz does not draw the flag, however. Second down and 19. Science is spinning out of trouble, only for the moment. The receiver deep downfield and coming back is Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown did not give up on Esiason. Esiason made a good move. He got away from Mike Merriweather, the linebacker. Left downfield. Eddie Brown did not give up on his quarterback. And there's a first down inside the 15. Merriweather just takes too severe an angle coming inside. Makes it an easy move for Boomer to get away. With all the other rushers spread out, he finds the room. Now, most time receivers will come back to the ball, but this time, Eddie Brown just ran to the outside to an open space. 44-yard pickup on the play over Donnie Shell, number 31. Now, Donnie Shell is not the man who is definitely responsible for coverage. Looks like his own coverage. Eddie Brown was smart just running to the open area. Good work between the quarterback, Esiason, and Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown consciously aware of the left-handed Esiason. Kept moving. This is James Brooks, and he works inside the 10-yard line. Down to about the 8-yard line. That was a touchdown-saving tackle by Eric Williams. It looked like he had a lot of room to the outside, Frank, to his left. He tried to go inside Eric, and Eric made a real good tackle low, flipped him up in the air. Gain of about six. It'll be second down and four. Well, their opponents having success inside the 20. And we have a timeout call. Steelers only have 10 men on the field. I think it was Eric Williams who was missing in action, if you will, and so they stopped the clock. And we'll be returning to Riverfront Stadium in just a moment. The Steelers have given up a timeout. Ten men on the field. 8-14 remaining in the first half. Steelers and the Bengals were tied at seven. The Bengals have the football. Near the eight-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They can get a first down at the three-yard line. They have a second down and five. Boomer Esiason spreading the word. Collinsworth goes left. Eddie Brown to the right. Looking for McGee. And the rookie, number one draft pick, takes it in on a shot from Esiason that was dead on the target. They are trying to cover him with one man, Sheffield. And he whistled right by him. Steelers playing that man-to-man -man coverage, trying to get as much pressure as possible on Boomer Esiason, even down here close to the goal line. They weren't able to get the pressure on him this time. He stands poised, solid in the pocket, finds the young man from Tennessee for the touchdown over Chris Sheffield. Tough duty, one rookie working against another rookie, but it is tough duty on a cornerback trying to cover a speedy receiver like McGee on a quick slant in when the quarterback has time to throw it. Jim Breach. And the Bengals have the lead. Hey, they are so high on Tim McGee. 5'10 McGee, 5'10, 175 pounds. He has good speed, terrific athlete, set all the fast receiving records down at Tennessee, and they've had some great receivers over the years. Here's another look. As Willie Galt being one of those great receivers. Tim McGee, not the biggest man in the world. Some people thought his speed was not great. Some of the scouts really felt he didn't have the great speed, but he has deceptive speed. I think he was fooling them. <laughs> over 120 receptions at Tennessee, over 2,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, and Sam White's very high on him as he has now scored his 
first professional touchdown, but you put McGee in there with Collinsworth. You have Eddie Brown, the number one draft pick out of Miami of a year ago. Had a sensational rookie season with 53 receptions. You throw in the tight end, Rodney Holman, and then how about James Brooks out of the backfield? You've got yourself a lot of fine receivers. You've got great pass catchers, guys that will go after the football, and when they get in there, Frank, they are so fast, they spread out that defense so quickly, it frees up the middle in the short passing game. Maybe that's what I question about all this funny stuff. The attack offense, no huddle. Go out there with that huge offensive line you've got and just play football. You're going to beat a lot of folks. Breach. Puts it up. Short kick. Elder. Elder, with a little extra effort, gets back out to the 20-yard line. A reminder, Saturday, exciting regional action on CFA college football. Number two ranked Alabama takes on SEC rival Tennessee. Of course, Mike Shula quarterbacking for Alabama and having a great year. Or you watch Baylor against Texas A&M in a key Southwest Conference shootout. So check the local listing for the game you will see in your area. Coverage begins with college football today, live at 3 o'clock Eastern time. And, of course, Saturday right here on ABC Sports. Busy week for us. Baseball playoffs, Monday night football, and college football coming your way on Saturday. First down and 10. Jackson. Out to the 25-yard line. Gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Jackson's not big, 5'9", 202-pounder, but he really developed down in San Diego. They got him in the eighth round in 83. Carried the ball 11 times in 83, and then... The next year, he led the AFC in rushing. And they promptly traded him to Philadelphia where he was a 1,000-yard rusher of a year ago. And I guess Buddy Ryan didn't think much of that. He let him go, and the Steelers got him on waivers just when they needed him. Second and five. Sweeney. Hit by Billups. Taken out of bounds, and Brister was also leveled after he released the ball. One of the pass patterns that you really have to time out, Frank, goes deep into the sideline. If Bubby had gotten this off a little bit sooner, Calvin would have had more room in the sideline. Now, you see he goes up in the air, but the rule is if he would have landed in, they should count it as a catch. If his momentum is going to take him out and he's hit, it's incomplete. The official decided he would have landed out of bounds anyway. Very close. Third down and five. Christian with all kinds of time now in trouble and has to throw it away and Brister pounded once again and he was really hit this time by Jim Scow a rookie from Nebraska and they bring Scow in on the four down lineman position and when they bring him in and they also have Joe Kelly the rookie linebacker they have four rookies in that defensive unit for the Cincinnati Bengals these are a bunch of kids out here Defensively, they've been playing that way defensively too, I might add, but they're going to be much better. Newsom hits it, it's low, and this is Tim McGee. Tries to break it back inside, hit there by Dave Edwards, and we'll have a first down for the Cincinnati Bengals near their 27 yard line. Important game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I keep repeating it because it's been a long time since the Chuck Knoll team has started one and four. As a matter of fact, all the way back to 1976, and then they promptly won nine in a row, and the rain, as you can see, is starting to fall once again. And they were knocked off in the playoffs back in 76 by the Oakland Raiders. That's how they've started thus far. They'd like to change that around tonight. Flags fly. 30-second clock having ticked down. I don't know if the 30-second clock or looked like there might have been some movement in the offensive line, Frank. Looks like they were... Offense, number 64, false start. The left guard, Bruce Kazerski. Just to the left, a big number 50, running to the center. There is movement. Looks like a track man trying to get one of those rolling starts. So it'll be first down and 15. The young 41-year-old Sam White going against the heady, wily, crafty veteran Chuck Knoll in his 18th year. He's all those things. Brooks. 
He has such a great move when he gets outside. He should have been nailed at the line of scrimmage where a flag is down. But he worked it for four to five yards. He's fun to watch. Cincinnati is on a march towards their own goal line. They've been flagged now, I guess, about three or four times for offensive holding. Boy, it is now raining hard. And it is starting to get chilly. People came prepared for it. Offensive holding, number 68. And first down will be repeated. He calls number 68. I don't think there is any 68 on the roster with Cincinnati Bingo. That could have been Kazerski again. They were pointing an accusing finger at him. As we are rained out in Metson Houston in New York also. You don't rain these suckers out. You just play them and you get miserable and it gets cold. People stick around and watch. That always amazed me. First and 25. Siasson. Overthrows Eddie Brown, and when you get rain like this, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hurt your passing game, although that ball might have slipped. Your receivers have a bit of an edge because they know where they're going, <laughs> and it makes a big difference. I used to, Lynn, I don't know about you, I used to like to play in the rain. I, I knew what it. I was going to do, and the defensive back didn't. I like playing in the mud. Oh, Slopping around there. Oh, Trojans like the mud. <laughs> It's funny, we talk about the rain. The only game I know of that was canceled or stopped because of the rain was a game you were announcing I was playing in, the Chicago All-Star Game 76. You flew down from the Olympics to Oh, cover. that was the lightning. That was fearful. Second and 25 for Boomer Esiason. Brooks, I don't know whether they wanted to give that reverse to Eddie Brown or not. It became academic as Keith Gary got right in the middle of the play, and Cincinnati is about to work their way out of Riverfront Stadium. Again, the whole thing began up at the 27-yard line, and now... Brooks has dropped inside the five. One of those tricky finesse plays you're talking about with all the talent that Cincinnati has deep in their own territory. They try and pull one of those trick plays out of their hat on the reverse. And if he intended to hand the ball off, he made a good move in not doing it because he could have muffed that handoff and then Keith Gary would have been in position to recover it, possibly for a touchdown. Well, now let's see what they can do. And just about everything wrong they could do. They have a third down and 33. The ball at their own four-yard line. And this is when you're happy the coach is calling the plays. Brooks slithers through a little opening out over the five-yard line near the six-yard line. And we're going to see the putting unit. And they're going to be kicking from their own end zone. That means Jeff Hayes, who's not one of your monumental punters, is going to be on the spot. Plus the fact with the rain, you have to watch the long snap. The ball is a little, has a little bit of water on it. He's got to handle it carefully. Hayes, of course, uh, kicked in previous years with the Washington Redskins as we look at Rick Woods. Bobble the ball, and Hayes probably very wisely will take the safety rather than to try to get that off and lose a touchdown. Ed Brady was right in there on top of him. No, Ed Brady that was snapping the ball. And pressure put on. Very low snap. Hustling in there, Dave Edwards. It was low, and we've seen now a low snap, and earlier by Brady, a high snap. And could have been handled, but again, the ball hitting a wet carpet, and Hayes did the right thing. Well, Maybe he did the only thing. <laughs> the only thing. There's a lot of Fear. hot breath all over him. <laughs> Dennis Winston. Dennis Winston hits you. You'll know it. You'll remember it for about a month. And, of course, following the two-point safety, you put the ball, ball in play from your own 20-yard line. You can do it either with a punt or kicking it from the carpet, but you cannot use any kind of a tee. Brady with a bad snap. Earlier he had a bad snap that was high. But there is the safety. They were all there. Steelers' first safety are people with the machines down there, tell us, since 1983. We got some smart machines. <laughs> yeah, they can dig do. back into history. Nobody ever questions them, though. <laughs> well, somebody out there will. Well, Jeff Hayes says, I like kicking for the 20 better in my own end zone anyway. High kick. Rick Woods takes it at his 27-yard line. And 
spreads out near the 44-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10, 440 remaining in the first half. Bengals leading now 14 to 9. A week from tonight, undefeated, the Denver Broncos will go into Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, up against the New York Jets, who are 5 and 1. We don't know about Kenny O'Brien, whether he'll be back for the Jets as quarterback or not. They went with Pat Ryan yesterday, got by New England. But we do know that John Elway will be there. Danny Reeves has the Broncos off to an undefeated start. This is first time that they have been had this kind of record from, from 77 when they went to the Super Bowl and down goes Brister in the arms of Fulcher the rookie who came on the safety blitz Steelers coming into tonight had given up just five sacks that was low in the NFL but that was against Mark Malone who curiously even though he had been sacked fewer times than any other quarterback also was the lowest rated quarterback in the NFL into tonight. And there is the third round draft pick out of Arizona State. 6'3, 228. He was almost a linebacker, Frank. Second down and 20. Jackson. Driven out of bounds, and it could have been a late hit by Bobby Kemp as Jackson is driven all the way into the Cincinnati Bengals bench. Bobby Kemp is known as a, a good hitter. Personal foul on the defense number 26. Now he was in there late, and that will cost Cincinnati. Take a look at it again. You see number 60, Randy Rasmussen, getting out there and make, trying to make the block. Did a little holding there also on Leo Barker, number 53. I said this earlier, and it's going to be a big problem for the Steelers. They've got to correct it. They've got to get the linemen who are leading the blocks to kick out on those people who have contained to give the running backs an alley so they can turn the ball upfield. Ernest Jackson is very lucky not to be injured from that bench. Well, that was interesting. Whites didn't waste any time. He took Bobby Kemp out, and he put number 35, Jimmy Turner, in a free safety. Kemp, a long time starter there. The first down following the penalty to the 47-yard line, and this is Abercrombie, and he'll be dumped for a loss back close to midfield. It'll be a loss of almost three yards. One of those plays, Frank, when they had the linebackers and everybody coming on the play anyway, there's no way they were going to get outside of it. Now well, they say the Chicago Bear defense, the old 46, began as a run against, as a defense against the run. Turned into an awesome weapon against the pass, but that was because of the personnel. You're blitzing and you have controlled lanes, it is just as effective against the run as it is the pass. As we just witnessed. Second down and almost 13. Brister tried to get it into the tight end. Gothard and good coverage. That will bring up third down and long. Carl Zander is back there covering the tight end. Second year man out of Tennessee. This is a young football team. We mentioned the rookie starters. We see a lot of Joe Kelly, a first round draft pick out of Washington. Zander, who is a defensive end of Tennessee, is only in his second year. Emmanuel King, the other linebacker, is only in his second year. Third down, 13. Brister, it's incomplete. Lewis Lips does not hold on. A pass that probably should have been released a little earlier. And now Bubby has missed his last eight consecutive passes. I'm very surprised that Lewis Lips didn't make that catch, Frank. Even though it could have been thrown sooner, he's coming back to the ball. He had the good opportunity to get it into his body and hang on to it. It's a catch that Lewis Lips has made on several occasions for the Steelers. This time, he just doesn't make it. You see there, the ball's coming in, away from him. He's got his hands on it. But when he falls to the ground, it comes loose. Newsom to punt. Almost blocked. Had to hurry that one. Ray Horton was back to Cincinnati, but that ball goes out of bounds up near the 20-yard line. Cincinnati gets it back with 3.49 remaining in the first half, and the Bengals on top, 14-9. And, of course, a lot of activity going on in the world tonight. 
and will be joining Peter Jennings in New York. Keep us abreast of not only what was stated by the president this evening, but also about the summit talks that were ended yesterday. First and ten, the ball at the 20-yard line for Cincinnati. Brooks hammered by Merriweather from the outside, but not until he collects three yards up near the 24-yard line. Gary Dunn's doing a real good job, Frank, in that center, going up against Remington. Played that play particularly well, penetrating, making contact with Brooks before the linebackers came in and mopped up the action. When he's healthy, he's just about as good as you want to find in the ranks of the nose tackles around the league, Gary Dunn. Siason looking over a second down and six from his own 24-yard line. Brooks. He's so good. He's so quick. He gets the first down out of the 32-yard line. Almost impossible to get Brooks one-on-one. -on -one. You, you can get him in the open field, you can forget it. You could tell by the way that Boomer threw this pass. He was looking for the swing pass all the way. Just ran the, the other defensive backs off with the wide receivers. Look at this move. A little head and shoulders move. Shakes 50. <laughs> Winston didn't even touch him. 55 Winston <laughs> out of the socks. You don't mind missing him, but, but at least touch him. No, he, he'll beat a lot of great linebackers one on one. First down. Siason wanted to go deep, but had to dump it off to Bill Johnson. Johnson turns it into about a nine yard pickup out over the 40 yard line. Collinsworth, I believe, was the prime receiver. He was covered deep. Siason had to check it off to Johnson. Johnson limping a bit on that play. Solid running back playing behind Kennebrew until he was injured. And we'll get the two minute warning before Cincinnati can get off another play. Rain now falling once again and very heavily. Cincinnati moves to the sidelines. They have a second down and two. And we'll be back with more action in a moment. Let's light up Cincinnati night. And so much has happened to the downtown part of Cincinnati. All of it on the positive side since they built Riverfront Stadium literally right in the heart of the city. There, of course, is a major riverfront development being planned. Much of it tied to the celebration of Cincinnati's bicentennial in 1988. Meanwhile, Cincinnati's Bengals have a second down and two. The ball... At the 41-yard line, we have two minutes remaining in the first half. And Brooks gets the first down, but a flag goes down. Bengals leading the Steelers 14-9. The Bengals 3-2 in this young season. The Pittsburgh Steelers in dire straits at 1-4 in the early going. Injuries continue to be leaguer than Steelers. Number 93 on the defense. Keith Willis of the Steelers encroaching onto the line of scrimmage. Chris Sheffield, we understand, the cornerback, has re-sprained his left ankle. He has been troubled with that ankle for the past couple of weeks. Ray Penny has bruised ribs. We don't know whether we'll see either one of those Steelers coming back, and they have been really injury racked the Steeler team on first and ten Brooks and Brooks is inside Pittsburgh Steeler territory near the 48 yard line Brian Hinkle on the stop Brian Hinkle a great outside linebacker who kind of plays in the shadow of Mike Merriweather Mike Merriweather having been to the Pro Bowl the past couple of years but Hinkle is one of the fine linebackers in the league today. Number 53 for the Steelers. Frank with Chris Sheffield out. Number 26, John Swain is in the ball game. He just came off the injured reserve list. I'm sure Cincinnati will get to him. Second and four, and they come right over against Swain as Brooks picks up another Cincinnati first down. And you can't hide out there. There's no way in the world you can hide. No, you can't. They can protect you a little bit. They can protect you with a pass rush. They can give you a weak side safety. But the problem is the Steelers have been trouble on both sides of the field. Sheffield 
the rookie from Albany State played well, but he's had a very sore ankle. He's been victimized over the past couple of weeks, but so has the other cornerback, Harvey Clayton. Can't protect them both. It's very difficult. First down, Cincinnati. 39-yard line of the Steelers. 111 remaining in the half. Brooks. Bouncing off one Steeler after another. A little scuffle breaks out down below here as David Little is getting it on with the center, Dave Remington. Mike Merriweather in there acting as peacemaker. And Cincinnati will call timeout with 102 remaining. Bengals using their first timeout here in the first half. And the entire team will move over to the sideline. They will stay there until the time out is concluded and they move back out onto the field. This is one of the wrinkles that Sam White has brought to his Cincinnati offense. Not an innovative young coach. Very enthusiastic. Doing a lot of different things. Sure does. He compares this to a basketball team when they call their timeouts and so forth. The whole team comes over to the bench. They huddle up, get a few words from the coach, he diagram some things on the chalkboard, and he gets input from the linemen. The linemen are saying they're doing certain things on the defense. We have to make an adjustment here. Boomer can hear that. They can communicate with each other in a relaxed atmosphere, then go back out, hopefully implement some ideas and corrections, and take advantage of the defense. The receivers. They spread it around, don't they? And we talked about earlier the caliber of these receivers also. And the one they are anticipating greatness from is Tim McGee, their rookie first-round draft pick out of Tennessee. Real tough to concentrate on one when you see that many receivers active catching the ball in the first half alone. And when you're hurting in the secondary, as the Steelers were coming into tonight, and they have lost one member of that secondary already with an ankle injury, Chris Sheffield. Well, they can drive a defensive coordinator like Tony Dungy up the walls. Second down and 11. Siason nails an official. Looks downfield and fires complete to Bill Johnson. And Johnson struggled up close to a first down, held short at the 30-yard line. Keith Gary putting the pressure on Esiason. And Esiason players down and not official. Moving. And we'll have another Cincinnati timeout and trying to identify the injured Cincinnati Bengal, who is slow getting up. Bill Johnson, who was the receiver on that pass, is the injured Cincinnati Bengal. And there is much attention being paid to Bill Johnson. Johnson in his second year out of Arkansas State, one of the two big backs they like to deploy, along with James Brooks. Let's take a look at Esiason. He keeps Gary with a lot of pressure there, number 92. He takes a real deep drop. He just pushes the official down, trying to get to the outside and find some room to throw. He does find Johnson. There you see number 50, David Little coming up, Merriweather, and the gang tackling. Whenever you have gang tackling, get crunched like that, you've got a big problem. He's in a sitting position, Frank. He's coming down, and look, he gets all that weight on his back. And David Little gets in there late, right there. Just he, comes in with his helmet. And he is still prone on the carpet here at Riverfront Stadium. Bill Johnson. Hopefully just the wind knocked out of him. We will not speculate on the extent of the injury. But it was rather violent. Coming into tonight, averaging over six yards a carry. Former USFL player, 1985, had a good year with the Denver Gold. Over 1,200 yards rushing and has been a great deal to the Cincinnati offense. That, of course, incidental to his health at the moment. This game is a rough game. There are always going to be injuries. You hate to see it. You hate to see a player remain down that long because while you don't like to speculate as to the extent of the injury, when a player gets into those kinds of positions as we saw Bill Johnson get into a moment ago, many things can happen. They are going to bring a stretcher onto the field now for Bill Johnson. And we will do our best to get some sort of definitive injury report to you as soon as we can get one. They will take every precaution 
in a situation like this. Make sure that whatever the injury, there's no further damage done. A couple of weeks ago up in Green Bay, of course, we sweated out a very, what appeared to be a very serious injury to Tim Lewis, who suffered a neck injury. And we, of course, were glad to, we were glad to report a couple of weeks ago that nothing was wrong with Tim Lewis, although because of a condition in his neck, he has decided to retire from the game. But again, they continue to work on Bill Johnson, running back to the Cincinnati Bengals and the receiver on that last pass play. Frank, shortly after that game that I saw on TV, I was in the Chicago airport and ran into Daryl Stingley. He was on his way to New York uh, for a fundraiser for Nick Bonacani's son, who was injured uh, down in Florida, University of Miami linebacker. And he saw that injury to Tim, and he had some great concern, saying that, you know, it's not just the injury that they sustain on the football field. Once you get that kind of damage and have that kind of structural problem, as that young man has, you've got to be careful what you do from that point on. Just a simple fall down the stairs uh, for someone like him could be a problem in his future. Sellout crowd here at Riverfront Stadium, and it, of course, has quieted with the injury to Bill Johnson. And again, they taking every precaution as well they should. And again, we just will not speculate as to what it might be. And he was in a very awkward position. We can perhaps look at it again and show you the position he got into. Now, he knew he had to reach that yard marker for a first down. Mike Merriweather is number 57. And as we mentioned, Johnson is very big. Consequently, he maintains the upright position now he gets into almost a sitting position now number 50 David Little came in late his own men were all over him and he was twisted and buffeted about at the bottom of that pile when you see him in that position it's very we can't tell you how he sustained the injury other than obviously on that play but in that position with so much weight on top of you it's very very difficult to sustain it something any any of us who have been close to this game and game has meant so much to us in our lives what you also are always concerned about is the fact that an injury like this may turn some mother some father off and not allow a youngster to get involved in this game because it has so much positive things to contribute to the growth of a youngster I said that following the injury to Tim Lewis when you consider the numbers of players involved in this game at every level right on down to the grade school level there are remarkably few really serious injuries. But of course, when there is one, it's highly publicized. And again, it often, I think, deprives a youngster of taking part in this game and learning the positive things you can from this game. Frank, I played Pop Warner as a young kid, and I had a great experience there. Yes. If I have one thing I I'd say to people out there and the children who want to play is, They've got to really be involved and make sure it is a good program. Make sure that young kids who are playing this game are playing with people of equal size and weight, not necessarily just of the same age group. And it will be a good experience, and they can avoid that kind of, that kind of problem. You saw head coach Sam Weich returning to the Cincinnati Bengals bench. He had been out there with Bill Johnson while they were lifting him onto the stretcher. And once again, we will give you... I report as quickly as we hear something on the condition of Bill Johnson, the second year man out of Arkansas State. There's head coach Sam White, and now Bill Johnson will be taken from the field. Again, we will not speculate. We just do not know. But as soon as we have word from the locker room, and I'm sure. As in all the stadium now in the NFL, there are x-ray facilities there. We will have the best of all possible medical attention. And we will get the word to you as soon as we have any definitive word. Meanwhile, there are 48 seconds remaining now in the first half. The Bengals leading the Pittsburgh Steelers 14-9. And it was Bill Johnson who carried an Esiason pass inside the 30-yard line of the Steelers, where it is now third down and about a half a yard as Larry Kennebrew now steps into the backfield of the Cincinnati Bengals. 
Bengals would like to add a few points. I mentioned it had turned off very cool, and now with the stop in the action, you can see the Boomer Siasen trying to warm up his hands. Kennebrew, easy first down, and tripped up and falls down around close to the 21-yard line for a Bengal first down. Bengals have one timeout remaining. They'll have to use the time remaining, 41 seconds, rather judiciously. You see the hole here on the outside. Number 82, Rodney Holman, does a good job here taking on the cornerback, Harvey Clayton. He opened up the lane to the outside. Just a low tackle there by John Swain. That's the only thing that prevents the big rambling Larry Kennebrew from going into the end zone. Cincinnati used their one timeout. That was kind of surprising. For a team that can get the plays off so quickly at the line of scrimmage, they don't even need a huddle. They have what they call their attack offense. And nevertheless, they use that one timeout. They have a first down near the 22-yard line. And they are huddled on the sideline with head coach Sam White. Well, since they picked up the first down, Frank, then they don't have to worry about you know, the short yardage situation. They've got four fresh downs. They're inside the 20. They can still pick up another first down before they get to the goal line. Brings him over to the sideline, gives him a series of plays, lets him know how he wants to attack this defense. Now they can feel free to go out and execute with four downs, no pressure, and hopefully score some points. Offensive coordinator, Bruce Cossett, under Sam White. Defensive coordinator under Chuck Noll, and a good one, Tony Dungy. The chess game being played out. First down and 10. Short into the end zone, trying to get the ball to Eddie Brown, who was back at the back of the end zone, open for a moment, but that ball had to cover a lot of yards before it got there, and the Steelers closed down on it. That's the kind of pass you try and throw when you've got a cannon for an arm. He had two people coming across, number 33, Harvey Clayton, number 21, Eric Williams, and they were scissoring in on the play. If he's got the arm, he can zip it in there. He gets to the receiver first. That time, the two defenders had the best chance of making the catch. Second down. The ball at the 22-yard line. Rock stopped with the incompletion of 33 seconds remaining in the first half. <laughs> Donnie Shell was back there with Chris Collinsworth and Esiason. Threw it away. And it'll bring up third down. He had plenty of time. We have to credit that time. The secondary of the Steelers, Frank, doing a good job on the coverage. Besides, he was not pressured by the rush. Receivers recovered. He didn't want to stand back there that long, eat up the clock, waiting for someone to break open. Throw it in the back of the end zone so no one can catch it. Reach is on the sideline. He'll get the call. Unless the Bengals can either get the first down or get it in. I said again into the end zone. That one just into a crowd. Intended for Rodney Holman. Chris Collinsworth was also there. As was Harvey Clayton defensively along with Eric Williams. And Breach will come on for the field goal attempt. 93, Keith Willis, once again, Frank, was in Boomer Esiason's face, moved him around quite a bit. He didn't have a chance to really stand solid and put something on that football to try and get it to a receiver in the end zone. I'll go back a while ago with 41 seconds on the clock when they used their last time out. You'd moved the ball well running the ball down there. You took away Brooks out of your offense running it when you use that timeout. You come back and you throw three straight times into the end zone, and now those are four percentage passes to begin with, and now you settle for the three-pointer. It'll be a 40-yard attempt. Kreider gets it down. And Breach misses off to the right. So, the 13 seconds remain here in the first half. Score remains the same. 14 to 9, the Bengals over the Steelers. Once again, it's a Steeler defense that, as we have said earlier, has played well throughout this five-game season thus far into the sixth game. They've done a good job. 
They come away with Cincinnati knocking at the door, and they turn them back. That's the defense has been hurt tonight with the loss of Chris Sheffield, their cornerback. We talked about Sheffield, the rookie from Albany State. We don't know whether he'll be back or not, and Brister will run off the remaining seconds here in the first half, and both teams will go to the locker room with the Cincinnati Bengals leading 14-9. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will return after this word and then a message from our local stations. Stay with us. We're about to get underway the second half. The game, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals and for the Steelers, almost a must-win situation for them here in the Central Division of the AFC, which right now has Cleveland on top with a 4-2 and two mark. The Bengals with a win tonight will tie the Cleveland Browns. But the Steelers are into tonight one and four. And they can pretty much write it off if they can't make it happen tonight. They open with Bubby Brister, the rookie from Northeast Louisiana, at quarterback because of a damaged thumb to Mark Malone. Brister has been not sensational, but he has been able to move the football, although he went for a series of about seven without a completion. Gary Anderson kicks off for the Steelers. Tim McGee, the rookie from Tennessee, takes it at the goal line. And out over the 25-yard line, he almost broke that. Tripped up by Warren Sykes. And out comes the offensive unit for the Cincinnati Bengals. And that means, of course, that Boomer Esiason, who has gone all the way for the Cincinnati Bengals, will step into the huddle. The Cincinnati Bengals rated seventh in the NFL through five weeks offensively. Sixth rushing the football, 11th passing. And going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, rated 18th in the National Football League. First and 10 Cincinnati at their own 27-yard line. James Brooks. And Brooks running well tonight out to the 32-yard line. Gain of six, it'll be second down to four. Brian Hinkle there defensively to make the stop. At one point in the first half, Brooks had outgained the Steeler offensive unit by one yard. See there, he has 61. I don't doubt that they'll use the running game a bit more, Frank. Try and soften up the Steelers inside before they go back on top with any consistency. Second down and four as they have marked the ball at the 32-yard line. Kennebrew hit right at the line of scrimmage. He might have got a half a yard out of that. We'd like to also let you know that the Washington Redskins have released place kicker Mark Mosley, and we understand they'll sign Max Dejas, who was drafted by Dallas this year and then released by Dallas. He was the record-breaking kicker from Arizona. The attack offense of the Cincinnati Bengals on third down. They try to prevent the Steelers from changing into a prevent type of defense. Pass incomplete. Chris Collinsworth uncharacteristically not handling that football right in his hands. And he had the first down. He sure did. Harvey Clayton came up to make the hit. But I think the ball was just bouncing away from Chris Collinsworth anyway. We have talked about the Steelers' corner. They have been under attack. They have given up some catches and throughout the season. But this afternoon, this evening, they have been playing quite well. Jeff Hayes has had a troubled night is on as Rick Woods is back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's had one block. He gave up the safety. Hangs it up high for Woods. Calls for the fair catch and executes at the 25-yard line. Woods is back there because of a lingering hamstring problem on the excellent punt return man for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Louis Lips. Rick Woods has his own problems. He's playing with a cast a covered cast on the thumb of his hand, right hand. My rookie year, Frank, I dislocated a finger early in the season, had it wrapped up, played most of the season with it taped to another finger and had to go back and return punts. They never do heal up and you don't get a whole lot of sympathy when you got a, a pinky that's troubling you. First and ten now, the Steelers' first possession. Bobby Bristol remains at quarterback is Ernest Jackson goes over the left side for a couple of yards Jackson in case you were not with us earlier the recently acquired running back from the Philadelphia Eagles following a season in 85 when he rushed for over a thousand yards 
And on the sidelines, the offensive unit of the Cincinnati Bengals have gathered together. Kenny Anderson, the veteran quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals for so many years, a starter, now contributing a great deal to the growth and development of Boomer Esiason. Second down and eight. Crystal with a lot of time. Gothard is the receiver, the tight end, and he comes up a little bit short of the first down. Again, dependent upon where they mark it. And they do mark it, I believe, short of the first. I believe that's his sixth catch of the season. He had four coming into the ball game, caught two here, and the Steelers don't traditionally throw it to their tight end very much. Matter of fact, the tight ends over the last three years, if you count those two catches, have only, the tight ends have only caught 29 passes, Frank. Where it is on running back Bill Johnson of the Cincinnati Bengals, he's conscious, he's alert, x-rays are being administered now. We'll have a further word, I'm sure, very shortly. Third down short yardage for the Steelers. Thompson in motion. Off the right side goes Jackson. His first down yardage out near the 37-yard line. And for the Steelers, Ray Penny, who had bruised ribs in the first half, is not back into the lineup. Rostowski is in there. Pete Rostowski. And meanwhile, the Steelers defensively, we noticed in their first defensive series, are going without Chris Sheffield, the rookie cornerback from Albany State. He has been replaced by John Swain, who has just recently activated. So the Steelers... Injury woes continue here tonight. Meanwhile, they pick up the first down near the 37-yard line. Brister is back once again, and again he has a lot of time. Sweeney is deep downfield, underthrown once again. Should have been picked off by Billups, the rookie from North Alabama. He had zeroed in on it. He just didn't handle it. In a situation like this is where you miss a receiver like John Stallworth. Bubby Brister is getting all the time in the world. Pressure being put on him, games from the outside, but the offensive line is picking up, giving him all the time. See people being held out. Now, John Stallworth here would judge the ball, slow down, come back, and make an attempt on the ball. Calvin Sweeney, twice tonight, Frank, has missed the opportunity to help his quarterback by slowing himself up and going after the ball instead of just waiting for it to come to him. And almost as importantly, twice tonight, he was wide open, and Brister did not get the ball there. Second down and 10. Quick look at head coach Chuck Knoll, who's had a very troubled year. Abercrombie. Abercrombie on a play designed to go inside, goes outside and takes it all the way down inside the 35-yard line of the Cincinnati Bengals. You talk about pursuit, Frank, on any particular kind of play where the linebackers have to get to the outside. That time, the Steelers cut off the pursuit of the Cincinnati Bengals. He had a 70-yard, 70 75-yard touchdown play called back from the first half. He gets to the outside. Lewis Lips is downfield blocking. He was blocking two or three people at the same time. Then number 35, Turner finally gets over to the sideline to knock him out. See Lewis Lips right there blocking on Breeden. Then he takes on Fulcher right there at 33. First down and 10. Jackson wriggles inside the 30-yard line for a gain of a couple. That was Abercrombie's longest run of the season thus far. A 33-yard effort that got the Steelers in good field position. There he is. He came into tonight. He was questionable during the week with a bruised thigh. And it was only a week ago that he really started getting over a disabling illness that he had about with meningitis that went all the way back to last spring unfortunately aseptic it's second down and eight brister is back the blitz is picked up sweeney working individually on the rookie cornerback louis billups because of the blitz by the cincinnati defense that was well picked up by the Steelers offensive line. Let's take a look at it. You'll see it right here. They all come and it's picked up well. You have to love Bubby Brister's poise as a young rookie quarterback. Only the first time since 1976 that a rookie quarterback has started for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Coincidentally that same game against game number six against Cincinnati in 1976 it was Mike Kruzik who was the rookie QB. Another first down near the 13 yard line. 
Lewis slips in motion. Abercrombie tried to go outside this time, and he was buried. Carl Zander covers Abercrombie, and there's a loss back to the 17-yard line. Bobby Brister now 5 of 17, not burning up the stats board tonight for 100 yards. But he had that string of seven attempts without a completion. As Zander. Good pass rushing stand-up defensive end for Tennessee. He's turned into a fine inside linebacker. The loss brings up second and long, second and about 14, and this is where the Bengals in the first half came with a lot of blitzing. And there's Ross Browner, number 79, drawn offsides. Referee tonight, Bob Frederick. Ball starts, number 60 on the offense. Andy Rasmussen on the left side. You'll see him move, and Ross Browner very wisely makes the contact, drawing the five-yard penalty. Wisely is correct. If Browner does not make contact, you probably don't call it. Rasmussen's in there, by the way, again, if you were not with us earlier, because of the loss for the season of John Greenstra, the rookie from Temple. He had surgery on his ankle. Second down and 19. Brister. Good shot to Ehrenberg. And Ehrenberg steps inside the first down marker at the two-yard line. Brister again. Very calm, very cool. And fired it into Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg played the Monday night football game against Denver with a very bruised shoulder. Still got in the ball game. He toughed it out. Now, he doesn't have all the great gifts, but what he does have is concentration. He has versatility. He'll run hard for you. He'll make the tough catches coming out of the backfield. And when in a tight situation, he puts his head down and takes you on. Reminds me a lot, although in a different style, of Rocky Blyer, who played so many years for the Steelers. You also saw Cincinnati trying to cover him with a linebacker, Leo Barker. First down, goal to go. The Steelers threatening to take the lead here in the third quarter. Jackson tries to go over the top, and he's held short inside the one-yard line. That was a low dive attempt, Frank. <laughs> he didn't really get in the air for it. No style points whatsoever. Sam Cunningham, where are you when we need you? <laughs> you see Jackson, he doesn't really dive up in the air to get over. He just leans forward. John Simpkins again met him. Chuck Noll, in his 18th year, he's seen most all of it. Mark Malone to his left as they look on. Second down, goal to go. Johnson again in motion. Jackson again. And again, he does not break the plane. Ron Simpkins met him once more. Chuck Jokin is signaling touchdown. But unfortunately, he's not wearing a striped shirt. This is getting serious. It'll be third down goal to go. Very close, but again, headlines went right at the line of scrimmage. Get that ball across the plane is all you need. But certainly he's not Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker would be five yards up in the air and over that mile. Out of the end zone. Partisan crowd exhorting the defense once again. Brister, he did this once before, and this time he's held out of the end zone. Now, decision time. It'll be fourth down. Not much of a decision. I think you've got to go for it. I think you do, too. Very interesting, Frank. When they were lining up, the defensive lineman over the center was just rocking back and forth, trying to time that snap because he had a sense of feel that the quarterback would try and go over the top. To make this play successful, the center really has to fire out and get some penetration. Mike Webster snaps the ball, but the defensive line of the Cincinnati Beagles have done a great job. Simpkins and Barker, they met Brister once again. It's fourth down. You have to go for it. Right now, you're testing the character of your team. Touchdown indicated by the headlinesman. The Bengals fans were not going to like it, but Touchdown was indicated. Ernest Jackson over on the right side. On fourth down, 
and inches. Jackson takes it in. Bengals players and fans certainly not approving of the decision, but it will stand touchdown. Situations like this is where tempers can flare. They make a close call. They give the Steelers the touchdown. Ross Brown in number 79 was one man who was not happy with it for the Cincinnati Bengals. Very close. You see the official on the far side signaling a touchdown. He's right on the line of scrimmage. He did signal the touchdown, and Gary Anderson is on for a conversion attempt. 129 consecutive conversions for Gary Anderson, and the Steelers have taken the lead 16 to 14. Let's look again. You have got to break the plane with the football. Let's take a look once again. Well, a team that came into this ball game, nine points, underdogs, certainly are proving themselves. If you take another look, Ron Simpkins making the heat, making the hit on the play. We'll be back in just a moment. Jackson, tough 33 yards on the night and one touchdown. He picked it up a moment ago. His first touchdown as a Steeler. Had several of them with Philadelphia a year ago and a bunch of them with San Diego a year before that. Uh, he provided a lot of running for the Steelers. They lost Frank Pollard out of action with arthroscopic knee surgery last week. Jackson over the past three weeks has provided a very talented running effort for the Steelers. Anderson to kick off. Crowd still exercised a little bit about that touchdown that was allowed by Jackson when it did not appear on our replay that he had broken the play into the goal line. Deep is Tim McGee and Stanford Jennings. McGee 85, Jennings 36. Tim McGee. And McGee. Some nice returns tonight. He's out over the 25 near the 27-yard line where it will be first down and 10 for the Cincinnati Bengals who now trail 16 to 14. We have 617 remaining in the third quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. Cincinnati's offensive team out onto the field. First down and 10, the ball at the 26-yard line. The word on Bill Johnson, the injured Cincinnati Bengal that we were so concerned about. Injured late in the second quarter. He's wide awake. He has full mobility. X-rays were negative. All good news. He has been taken to Christ Hospital for observation. So that's the good word on Bill Johnson. First down and 10, Cincinnati at their own 26-yard line. They now trail 16-14. Esiason back once again. This is wide open. Chris Collinsworth and it's picked off by Donnie Shell. His 48th career interception, but that ball was just overthrown by Esiason. Collinsworth was wide open. So Pittsburgh gets another turnover as the veteran Donnie Shell comes up with his 48th career interception. He leads all of the active players in interceptions. You have to marvel at his role, at his road to greatness for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A free agent in 1974, he makes a team based on special teams. See that ball was tipped. And Donnie Shell alertly there. First and ten. 38-yard line. The Steelers, once again. Abercrombie to the 35-yard line. Gets three out of it. It'll bring up second down and seven. Let's go back to that touchdown by Ernest Jackson a short while ago. Crowd booing the Bengals defense, saying no way he got in. This was the play. Ron Simpkins colliding with Jackson. It did not appear that he did get in. Nick Scarch, who is in the video replay unit for the NFL tonight, has told us it was not indisputable, visible as an evidence that he did not get in, so they would not turn it around. Meanwhile, live action, second down and seven for the Steelers. Brister is back, looking to get the screen off. Slobs it upfield, Sweeney is there. Breeden made the stop, but not until Sweeney gets the first down near the 19-yard line. Again, Look. tempers flaring. We've had a lot of that this evening. That's Lewis Breeden, who came up and made the hit on Calvin Swinney. A great crossing pattern. Now on the far side, this is a full field pass pattern. Lewis Lips is running back deep to push the cornerback and take the safety. You see Breeden, who is following Lewis Lips. 
Calvin Sweeney comes over underneath. Bobby Brister, who was forced out of the pocket and deep, threw off balance, but Calvin Sweeney was so wide open that the ball had time to float in, and he could make the catch. Sweeney filling in for the injured John Stallworth. Three receptions on the night, 91 yards. That one good for 16 yards, and another Pittsburgh first down inside the 20-yard line of Cincinnati. Jackson trying to get outside. Had a lot of pressure there from Fulcher, who came across the line of scrimmage from his safety position. Dan Reeder, number 40, was in there, had the responsibility for making the block, the lead block, wasn't able to get it. Jackson just had to turn it to the outside, sprint to the sideline, not to take the real big loss. Jackson got it back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Fulcher limping out of the lineup, and Barney Bussey, another rookie from South Carolina State, replaces the rookie Fulcher at strong safety. Lips is in motion. Abercrombie protects the football, gets to the 15-yard line before he's hit there by Reggie Williams. Reggie Williams, one of the great stories in the NFL. You don't hear much about the great stories. Williams, the recipient of the Byron Whizzer White Award this past season for community service, and he certainly is involved here in Cincinnati. Had the opportunity to present that award to him at the Players Association dinner out in Chicago. Remarkable young man, Reggie Williams out of Dartmouth. He was in on the stop. For the Steelers, it's a third down and six. Grister fires it into Lips. And he has first down yardage near the eight. Breeden victimized once again. Real good sign of respect for what this young Bubby Brister is doing this, after this evening, Frank. Obvious passing situation, but instead of bringing everybody to try and put pressure on them, they dropped only rest, rest four people and dropped everybody else back in the coverage, and they were still able to complete the pass. He, Brister is checking the plays that he has on that wristband. Plays being sent in. He has options on the plays. Chuck Noel said he did have a bit of a problem with the terminology. That's Reggie Williams once again barreling in to Jackson. Hit him right at the line of scrimmage. And even though the plays are sent in, he will have options. He will have automatics that he can change to. Now the play is being brought into the lineup. And bringing it in is Dan Reeder. Chuck did not simplify that offensive game plan because he had a young, a young rookie in there. He kept the same one. Second down, goal to go. Brister wants some quiet. Bengals defensive team trying to quiet the crowd. Brister, good coverage by Lewis Phillips on Calvin Sweeney, and Brister has to throw it away. And the flag is down. Delay a game on the offense. That 30-second clock had run all the way down. I was looking at it, thought that it might be close. I didn't see the official throw a flag or hear the whistle. He's seen the most of it, four Super Bowl championships. That's a record for Super Bowl championships. My colleague, Lynn Swan, tonight played in all of those. Still has a sense of humor about him. Getting off to one and four, as he did in 1976, but I'm sure that he recalls as we have recalled tonight that after they won in four, start in 76, they went nine in a row before losing in the playoffs to the Oakland Raiders. Second down, goal to go. Yes, sir. Gather the tight end. Takes it back to the original line of scrimmage, or close, and it will be third down. I was watching the officials on that play, Frank. There are two officials right there in the area. Gothard running towards the sideline on the crossing pattern. Again, Bubby Brister enjoys very good protection. And they watched him as he made the catch. 
got both feet in, and they looked at each other to make sure they were making the right call. Conferred, this was eye contact for a split second. Good catch. Third down, goal to go. Christer. He was just avoiding the sack. Scow, the rookie from Nebraska, was there. And Reggie Williams was also there. And we'll see the field goal unit come out now for the Steelers. Gary Anderson, as we look at the replay, the kicker for the Steelers missed one earlier from 26 yards. And as I mentioned earlier, he will qualify for the ratings in the NFL with this field goal attempt. If he is good, he will become the top-rated field goal percentage-wise in the history of this game. And that's what he's just done. Replacing Kansas City's Nick Lowry. From 24 yards out, Gary Anderson is good. Mary Brown. Married to the legendary Paul Brown, who was the driving force in the founding of this franchise back in 1967. And, of course, the Hall of Fame coach from the Cleveland Browns for all those many years and going back to the years of the All-American Football League. When he took the Browns into the National Football League, he proved they were for real. Still, of course, associated with the franchise. Gary Anderson to kick off for the Steelers. And here comes Tim McGee. McGee out close to the 25-yard line. We'll remind you tomorrow, ABC Sports will present the National League Championship Series as it has now reached Game 5. The Houston Astros and the New York Mets fight it out. Our coverage begins at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Also tomorrow evening is Game 6 of the American League Championship Series with the California Angels and the Boston Red Sox. So be with us for... Great series action. Wild yesterday. Boston and California as we watch James Brooks over the left side to the 30-yard line. He's run well tonight as James Brooks picks up five. It'll be second down and five. Of course, Al Michaels is working with Jim Palmer on that series. Not with us this evening. I'm working with a friend of mine from the Pittsburgh Steelers legendary wide receiving core of the 70s. Possessor of four Super Bowl rings, Lynn Swan. Good to have you here, Lynn. Thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure to do my first NFL game. You did a lot of USFL, didn't you? Yeah, a lot of them. Second down and five, one minute remaining in the third quarter. As we watch Larry Kennebrew get outside and just bull his way out over the 40-yard line. And he is a moose at about 270 pounds. He gets a first down for Cincinnati at the 41-yard line. Steelers leading 19 to 14. Final seconds in the third quarter. And again, we don't know exactly how big he is, but we know he's bigger than Sam White would like to have him. Sam wants him at 250, 255. He believes right now he's around 278. Says he's a bull runner, but if he was down to 255, he'd be a quick bull runner. <laughs> we saw that earlier. He missed the hole on a third and short situation. He just couldn't get there. He's got a large mass to get started. Well, they'll work him a little bit, take a little bit off him. This time he's tripped up and stalls for about a yard as the final seconds tick off here in the third quarter. That was 33, Harvey Clayton that came in, and you don't take a man on that size high, you take him low. And the third quarter has expired. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will return after this from our local station, so stay with us. <laughs> couple of wide receivers who have survived this game. Uh, his highlights are all in color. Mine are all in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, we had some highlights. Uh, we did have that. You, MVP in the Super Bowl after the 76th season. Good to be with you tonight. Good football game. Getting a little lengthy, but a very important game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're on top at the moment. They lead 19-14 to 14 over the Bengals. The Steelers with a 1-4 and four record. They need to win tonight to stay close and have any shot at this AFC Central Division, which is led at the moment by the Cleveland Browns at 4-2. and two. Second down and 10 as we begin the fourth quarter. The Bengals have the football at their 41-yard line. Biasen 
slipped one tackle and hook slide for a gain of about three yards up to the 44-yard line. Keith Gary coming in there for Pittsburgh, forcing Esiason to execute the run. He's upset he didn't get that sack. It'll be third down and long. Third down, we'll call it seven. There he is now in his third year, drafted in the second round. Three years ago, replaced the legendary Kenny Anderson uh, last year and was the second rated quarterback in the league last year behind the Jets' Ken O'Brien. Rapidly developing superstar. And no superstardom here as he goes down in the arms. Number three, Keith Willis. Willis, number one pass rushing defensive end for these Steelers. Leads them annually. Coming into the ball game, we said the Steelers, if they had a chance of winning this ball game, would have to get pressure on Boomer Esiason, not give them all day to throw the football, and they have done just that from the opening gun of this football game. Fourth down, and that means Jeff Hayes comes back out. Rick Woods will drop, and he settles in at about the 22-yard line. Hayes is beleaguered, and this time he's going to try and run. And he gets the first down, and he's going to get a lot more. Rick Woods tried to make the stop, but Jeff Hayes, who has had one block tonight, gave up a safety, has just raced 61 yards for a Cincinnati touchdown. And I cannot believe that this was designed to go that way. Not on fourth down and long yardage. You wouldn't think so, but in any event, it has to be a very happy Jeff Hayes because it has been a nightmare for him tonight, a nightmare of a season. He's had two punch blocks coming into tonight, had one block tonight, gave up the safety. The longest gain of the season so far on any run for the Cincinnati Bengals was 53 yards. I'll this tell you, one... the blocking Lynn was set up as a set play. He had a man in front of him. He had a hook block on the outside. So credit that one to Sam White. Reach on for the conversion. 61 yards, scoring scamper by Jeff Hayes. That turns on the partisan crowd. He's had a troubled season. He's had a troubled night. But he has put Cincinnati on top. We'll be back in just a moment. Crowd still applauding Jeff Hayes. Should applaud the call because on a fourth down, long situation, and you don't have the toughest defense in the NFL, you could have really hurt yourself. But that one paid off with a 61-yard touchdown scamper by Jeff Hayes. Reached the kickoff. Elder is deep for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Elder from inside his end zone. And to the 22-yard line. And let's go back and take a look at Jeff Hayes once again. The punter gets in a situation like this, and he's got some options if he doesn't believe they're coming after him. The Steelers have been rushing every punt prior to this one, and that time they stayed back to set up a return. Number 96, Anthony Henson didn't get there. He was the last man who had a real chance to make the tackle. And young Jeff Hayes goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Rick Woods had the last possible shot. Stanford Jennings put a block on in. First down and 10, the Steelers, who have been able to move the football well here in the second half. But they trail once again, 21-19. Abercrombie left side. Breaks it back and out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. A gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Seesaw battle, as you can see. Jeff Hayes, however, has had a horrible night, the kind you dream about if you're a kicker, with the blocked punt, both of them on bad snaps, the blocked punt and the safety that he was forced to give up. Uh, he certainly redeemed himself with that 61-yard touchdown run. Second down and five. Steelers at their own 27. Jackson. Like it might have been a bit of a mix-up on that play as Eddie Edwards is in there defensively for Cincinnati. 
Well, it looked like they tried to get the defensive unit to run to the Steelers' offensive right, a little counterplay, get the momentum out that way, then have Ernest Jackson cut back against the grain, pick up some blocking, and run. Unfortunately, <laughs> not enough for the Bengals' move. That was a major counter. It took about two seconds to develop. Third down and five. Brister. Under throws Calvin Sweeney. Incomplete. Brister knocked off his feet. He was looking and at... And the flag is down. I think it's going to go, however, against the Steelers. Yes, it is. And it certainly will be declined as the Steelers will be forced to fight. Bobby was looking at number 25, John Simmons, who came from back. Offensive holding, number 63, and the penalty will be refused, and it will be fourth down. The legendary one, Paul Brown. We spoke of him a moment ago, Hall of Famer. Great career with the Cleveland Browns. Chief organizer of this franchise here in Cincinnati back in 1967. It was only took about three years under Paul Brown that Cincinnati moved into the playoffs. Here's Ray Horton on the return. And Horton gets back to the 48-yard line. Not a good kick by Newsom. And Cincinnati is in good field position following that 33-yard punt. We're in the fourth quarter. The Pittsburgh Steelers now trailing Cincinnati 21 to 19 in a game that I feel that they must feel they must win. Our telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the National Football League is strictly prohibited. I say that about Pittsburgh because they are one and four in the early going of this season. Cincinnati is three and two. Cleveland is on top of the Central Division of the AFC. They are 4-2, having defeated Kansas City yesterday. First down and 10, Cincinnati, near midfield. Uh, Esiason expecting something totally different, I think, from his wide receiver, Tim McGee. Almost had that picked off. He's lucky it wasn't picked off. He may have thought they were coming in a the blitz. They didn't. They looked like they were coming in a blitz. Everybody dropped off. Robin Cole had a chance to pick it off. He was stunned. Yeah, that ball had his name written all over it. Shot to the ball <laughs> was Robin Cole. It'll be second down and 10. Ball resting at the 48-yard line. That doesn't make you dizzy. Nothing else will. It'll reverse angle shot for you. Brooks. Trying to get the ball to Eddie Brown on what I guess could be described as, but wasn't necessarily the old option play. Looked like he shot, put it that one out there. Donnie Shell had a chance to make the interception. He's coming up on Brooks. Ball went right by him. Donnie dropped to his knees and said, oh my, how could I blow an opportunity like that? They're down in 10. Stanford Jennings, number 37, split far to the right. Collinsworth is left. Siason, and he gets it into Tim McGee, and the rookie from Tennessee has a first down inside the 35-yard line at the 33. Working again in front of cornerback Harvey Clayton, who's attracted a lot of attention this season. Tim McGee's taking this share of hits. In this ball game, Boomer having enough time to find him on the outside. Safeties for the Steelers lined up, Frank, about 15 or 20 yards deep before the ball was even snapped. Trying to cover for those cornerbacks, Chris Sheffield, the rookie from Albany, stayed out of the game tonight because of an injured ankle. They have brought in John Swain, number 26, at the top of your screen to fill in for Sheffield. Brooks scampers to the outside. And held for about a two-yard pickup as he was pursued by Donnie Shell. It'll be second down and eight. Tonight on Nightline, the failed Summit Talks. 
Some say it was a missed opportunity. Others, the Soviets fault. National security expert Zbigniew Brzezinski will talk about it. That's later tonight on Nightline, following your late local news. Second down and eight. The ball marked inside the Steelers' 31-yard line. The Bengals leading 21-19. With Boomer Esiason looking over the defense. Esiason in the grasp. And the sack will be executed at the 41-yard line. Keith Gary was there first. And then Keith Willis. But there was some kind of a mess up in the backfield there. I think you saw it. But it looks like he was faking the two people who were scissoring across. I don't know if it was a mistake or just a long time in this play in the play fake. He goes back. <laughs> the rush is so strong. Number 92, Keith Gary gets in. 93, 93, Willis is in on the play. It just took too long to fake that that play. And that could hurt Cincinnati. They are looking now at a third down and about 16, but that would mean that Breach would be kicking an extraordinarily long field goal if they have to bring him on. They might not even be able to give him the attempt. Blitz again. Diason. Collinsworth. He has first down yardage to the 19-yard line. Harvey Clayton is trying to defend against Collinsworth. As you can see, Esiason is limping, and he limps back into the huddle. Collinsworth has been relatively quiet tonight. The leading receiver for the Bengals end of the night. You see 53, Hinkle coming there. They are blitzing, but they blitz in the center. Boomer Esiason escapes by drifting to his right. The southpaw finds Collinsworth in the middle. But may have sustained some kind of injury because when he got up, he was limping back into that huddle. First down, Cincinnati inside the 20-yard line of the Steelers. Kennebrew. And the crowd, they get into it. They are not booing Kennebrew, though that is a chant of boo, boo, boo. And Kennebrew gets it to the 15-yard line. The Boo Brothers. Siasen appears to be all right. He's not really that agile uh, quarterback, but he has a knack about slipping away from tacklers within the pocket. He seldom runs the football, but he moves around rather niftily back here. Second and six, Kennebrew. And Kennebrew is met first by Keith Willis. And then he attracted the crowd, but they will mark it just about at the line of scrimmage. Very important drive here, Frank, and a time-consuming drive. They've already used up over three minutes and 20 seconds on this drive that they began at 11.58 of the fourth quarter. Third down and seven, and that's where we'll be one week from tonight, watching the Broncos and the Jets get it on at the Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands. The undefeated Denver Broncos. Danny Reed is bringing in a very interesting football team headed by John Elway to go against the Jets, who are five and one. The draw play, again, very unusual call. The flag is down at the line of scrimmage as Esiason appears to have the yardage for the first down. And the Steelers are saying it's going to work against Cincinnati. The illegal motion. So a first down scamper by Esiason is negated with the foul. The line judge called that particular penalty. He's looking straight down that line. Usually when he throws that flag so early, it's encroachment or offsides or illegal motion. Illegal motion on the offense. Third down will be repeated. Just as we talk about Boomer size and not running the football very much, and the Steelers not expecting him to do it, he drops back, takes everybody's surprise by running a quarterback draw, and it was an excellent call at the time. He had the yardage for the first down, but they backed him up to the 22. Third down now and long. Would not be surprised to see some sort of blitzing action by the Steelers. Now they do appear to lay off. They go with the four down lineman.
Tyson looking into the corner and taking the ball out of bounds, the rookie Tim McGee. And that should produce Jim Breach, the field goal kicker. 92, Keith Gary, 99, Daryl Sims. 99, first time we've called his name out tonight. Both in putting pressure on the Sison. Almost looked as if he had to control or pull back his arm a bit because they were right under his throwing arm when he made that pass. Breach has missed from 40 yards in the second quarter. And that's exactly what this will be. Kreider is the holder. Just activated today. Ed Brady is the snapper. He's been troubled tonight. That was perfect. And so is Breach. You get the good snap, you get the good hold, and these kickers today are rather automatic from 40 yards in. We'll be back in just a moment. Another peculiar angle. Is Al Michaels up there flipping channels? Oh, he'll check some shows out for you, won't he? We're <laughs> bringing us continuation of that American League playoff series tomorrow night in Boston. Angels on top of that one, three to two, and what a thriller it's been. And the Mets in Houston will get it on before that at one o'clock here on ABC. Donnie Elder is deep now for the Steelers. Breach to kick off. And Elder takes it to the two-yard line. And the former Jet gets it back to the 24-yard line. Breach, by the way, is tied an all-time bingo scoring mark. Uh, 550 points. That formerly held, or he has, a, he has broken the scoring mark that was formerly held by Horst Molman. Good football game. We hope you're enjoying so much on the line, certainly for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And for Cincinnati, a share of first place in the central division of the AFC. That's Cleveland on top of the moment at 4-2. Cincinnati 3-2. The Steelers are 1-4. And, and Houston is 1-5. Steelers, they've been able to move the football behind rookie Bobby Brister. He fires it out to Abercrombie. And Abercrombie up close to a Steeler first down near the 34-yard line. Abercrombie slipped a little bit there. Looked like he recoiled a bit. The slip itself might have been <laughs> a very good fake, allowing him to pick up the extra yards. Brister looking downfield. Could not find a receiver. Or if he did, he was well covered. Dumps it off to Abercrombie, and Abercrombie gets the first down. Big night for Abercrombie. He's run the ball well, and a good receiver for Brister. Abercrombie once again. Out to the 38-yard line. Make it the 37 again of about three. It'll be second down to seven. Emmanuel King in there on the stop. Both these teams a year ago were seven and nine. Finished tied for second place in the AFC Central Division. The Cleveland Browns won the division with an eight and eight record. So I guess you could say, Lynn, you're never out of it in the Central Division of the AFC, the way it's structured nowadays. Time remaining in the game. Brister wide open. Gothard, the tight end, and Gothard takes it down inside the 40-yard line. He was wide open as somebody had to blow the coverage. Earlier, they were covering Gothard with a linebacker. Nobody even near him on that pass. A gain of 26 yards. My first receiver coach in Pittsburgh, Lionel Taylor, always said, you don't have time for five-yard catches, meaning juggling the football. Well, that time, Preston Garthard was a bit lucky. He had just enough time to regain control over it, of it before being hit. First down inside the 39-yard line, near the 38. Abercrombie to the 35-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Field goal will not do it. The Steelers trailing by five. This offense, which has been inconsistent, is playing remarkably tough. I think a lot of people at home, it's Columbus Day celebrating Yom Kippur, are surprised by how well the Steelers have controlled themselves on this offensive unit. All behind the rookie quarterback, Bubby Brister. The 
is trying to change the playoff. Here comes the blitz. Christer read it correctly. He tried to change the play, tried to get it to Aaron Berg, and just had to settle to get rid of it. You have to admire the competitive spirit of this young man who comes in this ball game. He's upset on that last play, Frank, probably because he doesn't get a completion. Yet most people wouldn't expect him to do half as well as he has done this afternoon or this evening. From Monroe, Louisiana, with the circuitous route to arrive at these Steelers, who talked about earlier in the game, giving up a baseball career before he went back to play collegiate football. Third down and seven. Receiver slipped that Brister had underthrown. It would have not been able to reach Thompson in any event. Fourth down now. You trail by five. 419 remaining in the game. What are the considerations? The defense has been playing well enough. If you decide to go for a field goal, you might trust him to stop the Cincinnati offense to give you another shot. But you're talking about a 53-yard field goal. So on fourth down and seven, Chuck Noll turns the rookie quarterback, Bobby Bristol, loose. This could be it for the Steelers tonight. Ouija Thompson, and he has first down yardage. And a very cool Bubby Brister waited until Ouija Thompson uncovered. Has he been playing pro football somewhere else that we don't know about, Frank? That was very calm, very cool. Fourth down and seven. Waited it out, waited until Ouija Thompson uncovered. He had good protection. Credit that offensive line. They gave him all the time he needed. Look at that calm. He pats the football a couple of times. He just waits for Ouija to cross. Ouija, a long, tall receiver, falls over for that first down. Getting away from Ray Horton. First down, Pittsburgh. They keep it alive. Jackson nailed by Reggie Williams. And there's a loss on the play. The 11-year veteran from Dartmouth. Kind of the spiritual leader of this defensive unit now. There he is. I mentioned a moment ago, very active in the community here in Cincinnati. Very well thought of. He and his wife, Mariana. He's a spokesperson for big brothers and big sisters in this area. One second down. That's the time remaining in the game. The Steelers trailing by five points. Trister again with a lot of time. Trying to squeeze it in once again to the tight end, Preston, Preston Gothard. The two linebackers, Sander and King, were there defensively for Cincinnati. Third down now and 10. Looking at that wristband once again. Ouija Thompson goes left. Lewis lifts to the right. Aaron Berg is in the wing position to the left. Brister, he'll throw it out of bounds. And once again, it'll bring up fourth down. This time we might see the field goal unit. Nope, we do not. Chuck Noll deciding to go once again on fourth down. No, and now he has changed his mind and Gary Anderson comes out. So whereas it was fourth down and seven a while ago with a 52-yard field goal staring the Steelers in the face, now they will bring out Gary Anderson. And this will be a 45-yard attempt. And he's good. From 44 yards, that's the official yardage. And Gary Anderson, who has become the NFL's all-time leading field goal kicker for percentage, has brought the Steelers ever closer. Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, 235 remaining in the game. The Bengals leading the Steelers now 24 to 22. 
Three timeouts remaining for both the Bengals and the Steelers. Question here is whether or not the Steelers are going to attempt the onside kick. Cincinnati Since thinks they will. They have all the sure-handed types up there. All deployed. The ball has to travel 10 yards, and it does appear as though the Steelers will try the onside kick. And it's covered over the right side, and covered by the sure-handed type that I mentioned, Chris Collinsworth. That's what you do. You bring up your receivers, your ball handlers, and Chris Collinsworth was right there. The Cincinnati now with the Steelers having three timeouts to try to get it back. As we look once again, gets the football inside Pittsburgh territory. 91, Greg Carr, a linebacker, comes over and tries to knock it loose, but Chris Collinsworth is having none of it. First down, Cincinnati, 46-yard line. The Steelers, 46-yard line. Steelers, once again, have played well enough to win. Once again, however, special teams have hurt them. 61-yard fake punt return for a touchdown. As Kennebrew tries the middle, and the Cincinnati Bengals work on the clock. Last week against Cleveland, special teams once again. Gerald McNeil returned the kickoff for 100 yards. Timeout call by the Steelers quite naturally because Cincinnati could have run the seconds off the clock down to the two-minute warning had they not. Saturday, exciting regional action on CFA College Football here on ABC. Number two ranked Alabama to take on SEC rival Tennessee, or you'll be watching Baylor against Texas A&M in a Southwest Conference shootout. So check your local listing for the game you're going to receive in your area. Now, our coverage begins with college football today that'll be live at three o'clock eastern that's saturday here on abc sports on a very busy week and then monday a week from tonight the undefeated denver broncos against the five and one new york jets we'll be calling the action from giant stadium in east rutherford new jersey and that one that should be a beauty i'd like to thank our spotter the malibu kelly hayes and our statistician george hill and the numbers man if you will our stage manager lou Codian. And Leon, I've enjoyed it with you. Frank, it's been my pleasure. How is Pittsburgh nowadays? Pittsburgh's doing pretty good. You still dancing around the ballet? I'm still working for the uh, Pittsburgh Ballet Theater. You're on the board, I understand. I'm on the board of the trustees, and uh, matter of fact, they just gave away this year uh, 14 scholarships to kids aging, ranging from the age of 10 to 17 for our Pittsburgh Ballet Theater School. Some reason I recall, who was it? Gene Kelly, you danced with in a TV special? I was on Omnibus on ABC. Had a chance to dance with one of my heroes and Peter Martin of the New York uh, City Ballet Company. Dream come true. I have enjoyed it. Now, Michaels will be back next week. He is with Jim Palmer, where we will pick up the American League Championship Series tomorrow night up in Boston. The Angels, California leading that one. Three games to two. Esiason on second down and eight. Being very careful. But the clock stops at 219. He just did the Steelers a favor there. Throwing that pass on second down. Incomplete. They don't have to use a timeout to stop the clock. It stops because of the incompletion at 219. Steelers had a chance on that play to pick it off. And that's not the kind of turnover. Bengals can afford at this moment. Steelers trailing by two. They need to get the football back. They've been able to move the ball against the Cincinnati defense, but they've hurt themselves. Tim McGee. Whistles are blowing, flags are down. Referee Bob Frederick against the Bengals, I think. Post starts. On the center of the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down will be repeated. Dave Remington. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, produced by Ken Wolf, directed by Jim Jeanette, in absence of our director, Chet Forty, who is directing the action in the American League Championship Series. Our technical director, Joe Chavo. Our associate director is Newbar Stone. Technical manager, Rick Okulski. Unit manager is Bob. Simon, telecommunication manager is Frank Feger, assistance to the producer Bruce Clark and Bill Bunnell. Third down and 13. Brooks. 
It keeps the clock moving, but far short of first down yardage, getting inside the 45-yard line where it'll be fourth down. The Steelers have two timeouts remaining. And I timeout. They have elected Fort to use Pittsburgh. one. It is their second one. They have one remaining in this half. Steelers with one timeout remaining. They're going to get the football back as out comes Jeff Hayes, providing he doesn't run once again. And I'm quite sure that he won't. Once is enough in a lifetime. That's right. The Steelers are certainly a, going to stand. They're going to produce a 61 yard <laughs> scoring run. They're not going to let him go anywhere on this particular punt. Rick Woods drops for the Steelers. This Sunday coming up for the Cincinnati Bengals. They'll be right here in Cincinnati for the Houston Oilers. They'll play Cleveland, by the way, down the line, the team they beat earlier in the year, December the 14th. And for the Pittsburgh Steelers, this Sunday they'll be home for New England. Also, Pittsburgh, they have a pretty tough schedule. They, down the line, they're going to meet Chicago and the Jets. They've already lost to Seattle and Denver, so not an easy road that they've been hoeing this year. And what remains of it is going to be difficult. Well, something's going on in the, in the Bengals den over there. They've communicated quite a bit with Sam White and back on the field. Wonder what they're up to. Fourth down and eight. And Hayes looking for the corner kick, and he gets a beauty. He catches it at the eight-yard line. And what a night for Hayes. It started off rather dismally. He had one block. He had to settle for a safety. And then a short while ago, he went 61 yards on a fake punt for a touchdown to put the Bengals on top. And he is just under pressure. Put it out at the eight-yard line. The Cincinnati Bengals leading 24 to 22. Have the Steelers with their backs to the wall. 202 remaining in the game. And they have one timeout remaining. They begin their offense from the eight-yard line. They'll have the two-minute warning to stop the clock once for them. Brister chased down by Emmanuel King. And Emmanuel King gets Brister just about the nine-yard line. There will be a gain of one. It'll be second down to nine. And we get the two-minute warning. We'll be back at Riverfront Stadium. The Pittsburgh Steelers with one last chance. Back at Riverfront Stadium, the Pittsburgh Steelers have the football. Second down and nine. The ball at their own nine-yard line. They have one timeout remaining, and they trail the Bengals 24 to 22. They have a, a great field goal kicker, the most accurate field goal kicker in the game or in the history of the game, and Gary Anderson. He can reach from about 55 yards out. He's done that in the past. So that's the problem they're confronted with at the moment. And they are confronted with that problem, having gone all the way with Bubby Brister, the rookie quarterback, replacing Mark Malone. That'll bring a flag against the Steelers. And again, a receiver slips and falls, but a flag is down. You saw the movement over the left side. I believe it was Rich Arenberg. Referee Bob Frederick consulting his crew. Sam White sending in number 24, Lewis Phillips. All likelihood, if, if it's on the Steelers for illegal motion, they'll decline it. It will make it third and long. Inside the 20, they'd only go back half the distance to the goal. Little crib sheet. Illegal motion on the offense, number 24, 34, holding on the defense, and the down will be replayed. Second down. Well, that's something we were not aware of. So they'll just replay this one over. So it will be second down and nine. Louis Breeden was holding. Rich Ehrenberg was illegally in motion, and Sam White is very exercised. He does not like that at all. A 
writes, although he has not gone public with it, when you talk to him privately, he's not, he's not really too fond of these gentlemen in the striped shirts. Because of a certain situation, for that matter, Chuck Noll was not all that happy this morning. Second and nine, Brister. Under pressure, and again, the receiver is knocked off his feet. It was Arenberg. And He's complaining he was pushed by Barney Bussey, number 27. And he might well have been pushed by number 27, Barney Bussey. There was certainly some action between the two of them. There was contact made. There's always a real subtle game going on between the defensive backs and receivers in terms of pushing off and holding. Third down and nine. Brister fires it in and out of the hands of Louis Lips. He made a diving attempt to get to the football. And that will bring up fourth down. Louis Lips has not had one of his best days this afternoon, but Sam White said coming into the ball game that they wanted to take Louis Lips out of the passing attack, out of that offensive attack of the Pittsburgh Steelers because he is so very dangerous. What the scouts love and what the coaches love about Lewis Lips is that once he does make the catch, he turns into a dangerous runner with the football. He had beaten Braden, and Brister just didn't get it there. Fourth down. And now, Cincinnati will call timeout. Is this Sam White's way of just savoring the victory? I don't know. I mean, you can understand Chuck Knoll's logic, even though backed up against his own goal line, going for it on fourth down. He wants to win this ball game. Doesn't matter at this point, being behind by two, or whether they score a touchdown and increase their lead to nine, or kick a field goal and increase it to five, unless, of course, you get into a tiebreaker situation for the divisional championship. <laughs> and if they lose this game, I don't think the Steelers are going to have to worry about any tiebreaker. What are you system. talking about? <laughs> I'm giving you all the scenarios. Is this Phil? <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh is in dangerous, in a dangerous area of going to one and five. That's what we're confronted with. And that is trouble. They have not been one and five since Chuck Noll came to the Pittsburgh City. 1969, they won their first ball game and proceeded to lose the next 13. Last game of that season. Joe Green took his helmet off, threw it, hit a goal post, and served notice on the league that he would have no more of this. Ready to go now on fourth down. Steelers at their nine-yard line. Incomplete. The Bengals get the football. Luigi Thompson dove for the ball, tried to scoop it up, and lost it. Never handled the football. He was concentrating on not trapping it. And the Bengals get the football back, and they just about locked this one up at 24-22. They could even put some more points on the board, which are meaningless. But now Chuck Knoll is faced with a monumental task. His Steelers will fall to one and five. Cleveland will lead the division, tied with Cincinnati at four and two. And so many injuries to the Steeler team. Hard to imagine how they're going to get out of the trouble they're in. Again, a reminder, we'll be at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. A week from tonight to bring you the undefeated Broncos against the five and one New York Jets. And there is the picture of the Central Division we were talking about a moment ago. One of your powerhouse divisions. I can remember not too long ago, Lenny, Lenny that it was the division. It certainly was. Two years back to back, we ended up playing the Houston Oilers for the AFC Championship. Where have you gone, Mrs. Team. Robinson? It has certainly changed. But it does change over the years. The power really now, the NFC East has risen. They are 
fine football teams there now. While the, while the Steelers take no solace in having lost this ball game, unless there's some miracle of a play in the last minute 23, the bright spot, of course, is Bobby Brister. Comes into this ball game, the first rookie to start for the Steelers since 1976. Man who was looking for a baseball career, but due to an injury to his hand, went back to football. Came to the Steelers, and I think his attitude, Keith, uh, Keith, I did that once before, I called you, Keith. I'll be whoever you want. I'm <laughs> flexible. Frank, wear, wear any hat you want. <laughs> Frank, uh, Keith who? <laughs> Keith Willis, maybe? <laughs> Steelers have no more timeouts. 1.23 remaining. And Boomer Siason drops to one knee. And the clock will continue to tick away. And it will be able to... Now Cincinnati will be able to take all the seconds off the clock. Steelers with that record that Lynn spoke of. 1 and 13 in Chuck Knoll's first year back in 1969. We're able to draft a pretty good football player the following year named Terry Bradshaw. And for so many years, he guided the fortunes of this team for this man, Chuck Knoll. And now maybe a new wave, a new generation of coaches starting to come onto the NFL scene. One of them being Sam Weich. Does a lot of things in a different fashion. A lot of the older coaches sort of smile when you talk about some of the things that Sam White tries to do. But he's been winning. And you get the feeling that he's going to continue to win. Innovative, yes. Controversial, yes. But he has the Cincinnati Bengals that top the AFC Central Division with the Cleveland Browns. Frank, I believe he thoroughly enjoys coaching the game of football. He was running sporting goods stores. He owns 13, still does. When he received a phone call from, from Walsh and said, come out and work with me. Out at the 49ers, where he worked with Joe Montana. They went to the Super Bowl, and they beat this team, the Cincinnati Bengals, 26-21. Paul Brown kept a record on this young man from his playing days here and said, eventually I think he'll be the kind of man I want working for me as a coach. And sure enough, he's here as a head coach. That'll do it. And the Bengals will win it. They'll win it 24 22. And they go atop the AFC Central Division along with the Cleveland Browns with the 4 and 2 record. And we will not see any handshaking going on. Chuck Knoll does not get into that picture. There's nothing personal between the two of them. And the Chuck Knoll, a man that has been there so many times, four Super Bowl championships. Well, it's going to be a tough road this year. Again, a bright spot, if you can find one, is the play of the youngster, Bubby Brister. Once again, the final score, 24-22, the Bengals over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Our ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Pontiac, America's road car company. Pontiac, we build excitement. And by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. And by Radio Shack a division of Tandy Corporation. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. We'll see you next Monday night with Denver and the New York Jets from the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Good night.